Oh, by the way, what are you going to name your uh, name your crew? Oh, I don't think we thought about that. We don't really have a crew name. I mean, we're the, the ship is the Swarming Swallow. Mm -hmm. um, maybe Miles would be the kind of guy to give the think crew a name. Once we earn it. I don't think I don't think Mike would think to do that. I mean, like, okay. definitely not think I, to I do that. Think, yeah. I don't know if everybody's okay. like super attached. I mean, we we run with each other for a little while here, and we're agreeing to work together in the future. But I don't mm -hmm. know how super attached everyone is. Well, that's something to think about. Is everyone ready now? I think everyone's ready. Yes. I'm good to go. Yes. I'll close okay. My art program. You can you can totally pull down the veil. Has the veil been pulled down? Yes, sir. Eight hours pass since the last crazy encounter for the most part the smell of metal rust and the sounds of the spaceport echo behind you know the soft thrum of power and core the power from the core kind of emanating through the soaring swallow everyone wakes up everyone recovers from their previous injuries and wounds and the exhaustion seems to fade away but there's a lingering sense of what's gonna happen now as well you guys did just murder about Six to eight, maybe more, maybe less, people and citizens of the world. How that affects you guys, that remains to be seen. But we open the scene to everyone doing what they would normally do on a Tuesday afternoon as everyone wakes and begins. All right, what do you guys so, do? So I'm an android and I, have, I can just not sleep because I don't have to. Um... Yes. Oh, actually, hmm? you still have to charge your station yeah. unless you're like. No, I'm battery powered. You you are battery powered, so like, you would at some point have to recharge your your batteries. Yeah. No, I have two batteries, and I just swap them out whenever I leave okay. the ship. So um, while everyone is sleeping, because mailing just doesn't like hanging out while everyone is sleeping, I'm gonna have gone out and um, a sold the compad I sold from or sold the compad I stole from the guy and uh get uh, a new data slate to replace okay. the one he shot. Yep, um, okay. You can and I would like that. to um, track down um, some of the miraculous plants that are on this pla planet um, and see if I can't get myself some sort of uh, cutting or seeds or sample. So that's what you do for like eight hours, right? Yeah, that's what I'm doing while everyone's asleep. Okay, all right. What about everyone else? Are they just sleeping in that time? Yeah, I've made myself a little bed in the corner, near the ceiling, near the top. Just All hanging right. out. So, Mei Ling, you kind of head out into the spaceports, and uh, in which case, you do realize that um, your, 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 your fares have been paid for, uh, courtesy of the doctor, Rupert Hensworth, from the other day. He what? had tracked your ship down, he's paid for, will be paying for all the expenses you see a message um kind of in your in your email there at least because you do have like a personal kind of connection to the ship you kind of see like a, a blip pop up just saying just the words thank you initials rh for rupert hensworth nice uh, you head out and you kind of go back into the city um the, the starport is actually away from the city it's kind of in its own little area is there um, like public transportation can i take the bus in there is yeah there's there's public transportation there's some shuttles some hover shuttles that go from the starport into the city. You're specifically going to the city, into the city, right? Yep. Okay. Well, that's the case. You gotta uh, stop this. I'm going to change the tone a little bit. And once again, as you kind of take a shuttle of all sorts of random people, some mercenary personnel, others doctors, others just students coming to and fro the area, uh, headed towards the again the vast and towering New Helios, the colors of neon purple green just kind of wash over everyone as you, again, take the highway. And even though the highway, the way that the roads are kind of, the walls on the side are kind of raised so that people kind of don't see the, the slums on the edge of New Helios, you know that they're there and you do see some smoke always from a trash can fire or otherwise kind of raising into otherwise the clear afternoon sky. Mm-hmm. You head deeper into the town and, or not the town, well, D&D &D think. You head deeper into the city and eventually you kind of get let off at a station. You hear the voices of over the intercom 
of directions and all that, and the rush of people kind of force you off. Do you know what kind of rude? Deep into the city, uh, think of it very New York S, where you feel your shoulder being hit every other second as you kind of make your way through the crowd. You find yourself in Helios. You, what are you looking for? Specifically a tech shop, a pawn shop, etc.? I'm looking for, like, yeah, a pawn shop. All right. You kind of walk around, you take a look at a nearby map, and you notice a very gaudy-looking pawn shop attached to a weapon shop. And on one, you see in very bright red neon flashing, some of the letters are burnt out. Um, Jack's Pawn Shop, spelled J-A-K. And next to the pawn shop is Jack's Weapon Shop. And uh, the P at the very end of Weapon Shop is kind of hanging, dangling. Seen better days. Some unsavory folk, two men kind of hanging, hang, hanging in front of the weapon shop, having a smoke. And the smoke kind of wafts and drifts into the air. So what do you do? Um... Immediately turn away and just chase and look for a more reputable place. <laughs> you look for a more reputable place. Okay, so yeah. you head down and you go around in circles. There's a bunch of other pawn shops. Um, you notice uh, Erickson's pawn shop galore kind of plastered up inside and in kind of a hole in the wall. And there's another one. It looks kind of clean, relatively for the area at least. This is a new Helios. Kind of don't want to waste too much time kind of walking around aimlessly for a couple hours, especially alone. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take that last one. The Ericsson's, uh, Ericsson's pawn shop galore. Mm -hmm. right. So you head in, kind of the door and jingles, but it doesn't jingle with an actual bell, but kind of a sound of a bell play through the intercom. Right. And it's a nice little jingle, and you walk That's in. And... Technology. <laughs> <laughs> and you notice along the lines is these uh, very aggressive kind of lights, holographic lights off the wall, and it's kind of showing the imagery. None of the items are there. There's just the image of the items. And you notice... Uh, as you walk in, you look behind, there's these thick iron bars, like about at least a foot thick iron bars kind of by the window. And this long, narrow hallway about 20 feet down, and you see all these holographic imageries along the walls. And each have their own little compartment that is currently covered by a metal slate for protection, so no one can really steal anything. And you notice an elderly lady. Uh, Right by, you, you, there's a plaque, but the plaque again is in these pink neon holographic colors. Uh, Mrs. Erickson kind of plastered there. She's there, balding, uh, long hair, and kind of sitting there smoking from a pipe, a wooden pipe, which is actually very strange. It ju juxtaposes the entire scene. She looks up, and he's stealing, and that'll kill you. And you notice, and she points up, and there's a giant turret that's ceiling hang. Turret just pointing at you with like this Gatling gun, about twelve barrels, just following you as you move along mm. the uh, to check out the wares. So I what don't do you like do? that very much. Um, yeah, so what, what what am I gonna do about it? I guess. Um, all right, I want to uh, look at their tech section, like see if they've got any data slates that are up to my standards. All right. Uh, you, you notice there's a bunch of data slates. Uh, the bargain bin version of a few kind of kind of worthless credits, um, but there is a few, uh, three that are about the tech level that was your old data slab, although some of them are used. But there is a new one, one singular new one that is slightly overpriced to mm. your distaste, but is the only one there that they can that that is being sold right now. Uh, what about the used ones? All right, the used ones, they tend to be about the price of a regular data slab. Uh, how much is that? Let me look that up really quick. Uh. So the uh, the new one that is kind of in nice packaging, this very pristine white, is about um, 450 credits, which kind of makes you, quote unquote, barf in your mouth if you had vomit mm -hmm. and bile. but. The other ones are, again, like 300, but they've been slightly used. Um, one of them has a cracked screen, but another one has a chipped edge, and another one has a very um, distasteful decal on the back of a woman doing some, well, woman. I'm saying things. a decal? Yes, a decal. A decal. Yeah, it's called mm -hmm. a decal. Do you mean a decal? You know, a sticker. It's pronounced decal, isn't it? Nope. Oh, well, it's a decal. <laughs> Uh, that Maybe. is acceptable, I think. Is that, is that a Canadian thing? That's interesting. It might be, I don't mean, I don't I've mean never heard interrupt, actually. 
I don't want to have it's a, a decal. Uh, so it has a it has a decal of a of a of a of a, of a woman with some uh, maple syrup that ain't quite the color. Eh? But you know mm. what I mean. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> so it's a decal on the back. Um, and you said there was one that doesn't have a decal on it. Yes, the one that has um, a couple chipped edges, but it's in a neutral color and a pretty pretty well kept screen. It already has a screen protector on it, and that one's uh, three hundred. Three hundred right. credits. All right, I'll take uh, my uh, stolen good compad out uh, and put it down on the desk and uh, say, I'd like to trade this for uh, uh, that con- that data slide over there. She she looks on, on her own data slab and she's kind of sifting through some uh, news articles. And she looks at you, she looks at the, at the combat, and she looks back at you and says, aren't you a little bit clean to be in this part of town? I'm passing through. All right. Well, if you're passing through, I guess you can earn some credits along the way. Let's take a here. Look, see at that uh, at that com pad, and she. I've gestures. done like a factory reset on it. Okay, so you've done like, a factory reset on it. Okay, so she takes it, and I assume you take out uh, like all like the distinguishing marks. Yeah, there's no like it's it's clean. I wouldn't okay. like. Right. She's smarter than that. Yeah. So she takes it. She kind of looks and she kind of takes her hand, and turns it on, and says, "Factory reset, huh?" She mm-hmm. looks and you notice like some of the edges have been chipped. She says, well, she kind of, she kind of looks over to where the, uh, the compads are. And you notice that some of the bargain bin has been taken out. It's like, you always use restock. Hey, All Alex, right. actually, it's What's kind of up? like, we had that fight like this, the morning, right? Like, this yes. is like, this is that evening after we spent the day. Like, uh, this is the afternoon after the, uh, the morning. It's afternoon. It probably still smells like fucking, it, it was in the middle of an explosion. It probably st- you probably didn't get that out. Oh, I didn't even think about that. It's hard to well, out of plastic. Hopefully she uh, can't smell. Well, well she's, she's going to see if she can notice this. But she was smoking, yeah, so she might not be <laughs> smelling. It's a fair point. It's a fair point. Okay, she's going to do She's gonna do notice, but she's going to get a minus, minus one because she's been smoking and the, the smell, but she has a plus two normally. It's an eight. So she, she it gives it a waff, and she she does a strange thing of looking at it, she licks it, she smells it, says, Where'd you get this from? Seems like it's been in a explosion. She kind of looks at you. Or, or a fire. It. It Probably a like, fire. Yeah, it smells like fire. It smells like it's burnt. Yeah. She might be more okay, worried else. about it being, like, not working. I, I uh, dropped it in the engine. In, in the end? Well, that's going to have <laughs> oh to take... Oh, my God. Uh, go ahead and roll, um... Damn. Uh, persuade. What's the skill for this? Um, so I'm gonna haggling to try to be like, well, no, it still works. It's just mm-hmm. this would be a lie. This is all lying, actually. Yeah, that'd be a... She's just this is no, it's talk. This is talk. No, no, the talk, talking. Talk, that, yeah. Well, I mean, but I'm just saying that this is lying. But I don't know if there's a skill. I'm just saying that like talk, talk is like all of that shit. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, because roll, like, roll. what you're basically trying to what do is that is... charisma? Yeah. Ba- you roll, roll your talk based off charisma. Think of a uh, reasonable gonna... explanation for why it smells like it's on fire, but no, no, it does still work, though. <laughs> oh, drop it in the engine, I'd say unconvincingly. You drop it in, drop it in the engine. <laughs> she kind of laughs, and another puff of smoke washes over your, your face, and your your um, scent re- receptors are firing left and right, and it's like a visible cringe in your face as it kind of gets laughed into your your, your nostrils. Sensory mm-hmm. overload probably sucks, even if you don't experience smell technically yeah. the same way. Yeah. Uh, it's just like a little stream of uh, information about the smoke going past my vision. It's like, no, stop. And you kind of sniffs. Uh, well, mm, 25 credits. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, 25 credits? Get this over with. All right, all right. All right. And uh, she takes out a um, she takes her finger and she puts it on the on on the flat white table next to her. Probably the cleanest looking table. And all this, um, you, the scans show um, by recognition, and a small little chip comes out for twenty five credits. And she hands it over to you. Here's your own twenty five credits. Great. Um, can I buy that, uh, Dave Slate, please? Oh, all right, sure. And um, she, I give again, her back her credit chip and yeah. also my own credit chip. Yeah, your own credit chip. So minus 25 off the three. So it's going to be 275 credits altogether. All right. So uh, she takes her finger and she presses and uh, 
the 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 metal plate that was on top of it kind of opens up, and uh, one of a retractable arm opens from the ceiling, drops down, picks it up with pincers, brings it over in in this giant glass case, and she takes it, she blows off the dust, she rubs it, and then presses her finger on a plastic part in the white case, and it opens. She hands you a uh, saran wrapped, as if done in a haste, data slab over to you. Thanks. At least it looks like the picture. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty honest about that. Yeah, I unwrap it. I turn it on. Uh, and you unwrap it and you turn it on. And surprisingly enough, it runs even faster than your old data slave. Nice data slave. upgrade. It, it, yeah, it's it's a definitely a firmware upgrade, but it's it's chipped at the edges. Like there's a very clear kind of gash uh, on the back part there. But I don't really think you care too much. It works really uh, well. Yeah, I'll fix it eventually. Yeah, you could you could totally fix it. All right, um, I say thank you and I leave. And, uh, all right, so I'll resolve that. I'll resolve the second part of you kind of looking for a job or looking for those plants later. Yeah. I'll go back to the party. So Mike, Miles, and Silicus, you wake up and you notice that uh, Mei Ling is gone. But she probably would have written, written a note or sent it in the group text and hey, going out doing some errands. We have a group text. So. Yeah, you do have a group text. We do indeed. What was so, our thing for that? Brackets? Uh, put or it in what? brackets, yeah. Uh, I think it was square brackets. Put it in square brackets. Because um, round brackets are out of character. Oh, that's sorry. The brackets are the square brackets. The mm -hmm. things you're talking about are parentheses. Fair point. Okay, buddy. The, you, whatever. Okay, so what do you guys do? You guys gonna wake up? Yeah, I'll wake up and I'll go get some breakfast walking along the ceiling. And you. Uh, you... I'll, I also want to be texting the, the guy that we got his number from yesterday, the Ursa guy. Oh, Sharing uh, war stories. Actually, this, this, um, this is a burner phone kind of thing. He will not respond. Uh, okay. This is sort of like a one-time thing. Only message if you're in shit. Got it. So you would know that. He would say, like, this is, this is your get-out-of-jail-free card if you, come into, if you come into a problem with the United Republic. If it is reasonable. If it is reasonable. Okay. So much shooting them. Yeah, so like he probably won't be able to bail you out if you like blow up a, a Republic base, but like something small, he, he might be able to, to help. Anyways, okay. moving on. Yeah, I'm just gonna go get some breakfast then. Think nothing of May leaving. All right, so I mean, we're all um, adults. Oh, by the way, uh, because you all have sort of like your um, your your lifestyle costs. What kind of lifestyles would you guys kind of live like? Would you guys live frugally? Would you guys kind of like regular humans like on Earth? Or would you get like a more fancier kind of living? Um, I would be very frugal because all I need is the Earth. Definitely frugal. What about you, Mike? What about... This is kind of like um, explaining like... oh, Right now, Mike uh, is living frugally. He's, he's kind of used to that. Yeah. Uh, but he would definitely like to improve his standard of living. But he wants to save up some money right now. All right, so everyone, go ahead and subtract ten credits. This is just for the day, just like your just water, food, kind of stuff like that. Supplies. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. right. Uh, uh, let's see. Now I gotta find that. Uh, yeah, Mailing, are you there? Where credits are. <laughs> uh, did Mini go okay? Okay, there. I'm here. I just getting water. So it's just um subtract ten credits for the day and five credits for the fare to to go downtown. Okay, I'm taking that other party currency because I'm kind of apparently I have no money. But you guys uh, put the inventory yeah, in my command, it's okay. I, like, I have plenty of money for living. So uh, we do need to be credits. careful oh, I, about... I, I, yeah, okay. Should be right did here, get... like, gear. Top of gear. Did you, yeah, um, so it. make sure if you do put credits into the, uh... Oh, there, there's party credits. You guys have, like, 3,000 party credits. Yeah, we, yeah but so we need to be careful. About taking that out, yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely. Um, the other well, thing, too... We is... also put Mei Ling in charge of it, so if anyone's going to no. secretly dip out of it, it'll be Mei Ling, and yeah. Mooney is going to mark it on the sheet, so just don't worry about yeah, it. But do you, uh, have, it's do just, you keep actual... It like... costs a lot of money, though, to upkeep a ship. Yeah. It does. The other thing, too, is lot. if you notice next to the cargo hold capacity, there is a last maintenance date that I put in, and the next schedule maintenance. If you fail to meet that maintenance, bad things happen. Just say it. Uh, if you scroll down, on the main we, we owe money at that point. Credits owed is a thing. Yeah, credits owed is a thing, and and we would just have to borrow money from someone in the area. Actually, to, currently, money. this ship is on loan to you from Uncle, so you don't actually own the ship right now. 
thought he gave it to us. Yeah, I thought he, he will be it. he will be giving it to you this session. But like the, okay. the, the one shot was just like kind of like you go, you guys blow the ship. But we'll deal with that in a second, okay? Because okay, that's what I have. That, anyways. Um, Mike's sleeping. Did everyone subtract? Yeah. So ten credits for everyone for the day. For extra five for mailing because of the bus fare. Okay, so after you guys kind of wake up and you have your, your 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 food and stuff, Mike sleeps in. What are you doing, Miles? Oh, I'm eating in the recreation area. All right, Silkus, do you wake up? You kind of like crawl in the ceiling and over to the recreation area. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and you kind of crawl over and you move your way over to the recreation and you come from the ceiling, the door opens. Miles, you, you look at where the door is, there's no one there, then you look up and you see Silcus kind of just like climbing around, and kind of, uh, slithering down to, to pick up some food in the fridge and then uh, sitting, do, do you like eat from the ceiling or do you sit in the chair next to, to Miles? Well, since Miles is there, I'll sit in the chair next to him. And the Maximilian, which is the name of the, uh, the monkey, uh, it's just there nibbling some on some dry banana chips. Oh, good morning. Any... Or good morning. Night. I'm not sure what it is. I don't think it matters so much anymore. Hmm, I had you, but... the monkey. Oh yeah, feed the monkey. He loves that. We'll totally feed the monkey, and this is delicious. Thank you for feeding me. It says from its uh, vocal receptors that is wrapped around its neck. Yeah, I definitely remember that part of the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you do. How long have you guys been, well, together? Not in that sort of sense, I think. Uh, oh, well, <laughs> when, when, you, when you say, when you How say- How long have you guys that's... been companions? That, that's when, when you say yes. in that sort is of sense- all of this just vocalized? <laughs> Yeah, when you when you say that, you just hear the, the Maximilian go ha 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 ha, just again and again. When you say not in that sense, and it's just the laugh. So, so like it laughs like a monkey laughs, and then an, an echo the, the the vocal receptors say ha 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 ha, and the robot. So it's this monkey up. like doing a little little like screamy monkey laugh, like slapping his knee while also <laughs> fuck. He's got like a dedicated <laughs> laugh button. That sounds terrible. I'm I love him. It's pretty great. No, it sounds pretty great. I oh. mean, it's great, but also sensory wise, I would not enjoy it. That's fair. And quite frankly, Miles, I'm shocked that you would keep him around for so long. Oh, well, he's quite handy, actually. I got hurt on an operation one time, and uh, he was a uh, he was a gift to me to uh, help me uh, reach high. So I got attached to him, and he just kind of stuck around. Oh. Oh, yes, yes. You have difficulty reaching up high. Uh, well, not anymore. I mean, it healed, but... I mean, I don't think I can... Uh, climb as well as you can, but uh, the upper discs seem to be back in order. Anyway, I saw you talking to that man. Uh, I forget his name, but uh, whoa, whoa, what the f no. Sorry, is that yeah. in? I was wondering where he was. Oh god, did he just randomly appear? No, he's been, he's he's currently kind of recharging at the he moment. He kind of chills there. Yeah, he, he sure. had like little, like like a little subsystem, like along the side of the ship that he can like emerge from, if he needs to just pop out of the wall. He is like really thin, isn't he? I kind of imagine him as being like really wiry. Very, no, he's not wiry actually. He's he actually oh, has enough. I think of him like you know like those little dolls that people practice poses and drawing from. He's like that. Oh, I see. So it's more like he's got like a little box in the recreation room that's like his, yes, his home. He just kind of sits there, or stands there. Uh, all, he's offline currently. Uh, uh, you notice, in, in front, in, written in like green neon lights, it's my break. Just kind of flashing there. That's pretty good. Oh, anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I saw you talking to the, uh, um, the Republic man. Oh, yes, the, the Ursa soldier. You seem to have issues with him. Oh, I just don't like soldiers. Pardon me. But, uh, you two have a history, or you seem to, uh, click in a way. Ah, uh, yes, yes, I, I, I am a bit of an ex-soldier. Ex-soldier, you say? Why the ex? Disillusioned. 
I understand that. When you come from a very small population planet, you underestimate, I guess, the impact you can make. That's quite, I'm afraid I'm not up on your uh, current culture. Oh, we're just in a very backwater planet, colonized. There's there's a very few of us, maybe about population of 500,000 at the most. Oh my, that is quite small. Yes, they just use it to mine ore and precursor tech and whatnot. <laughs> Mining, what a way to ruin a planet. Yeah, they don't treat us very well either. Well, I can see why you've become disillusioned. Is it, is it in Republic space? Yes, on the outskirts. Well, it does explain the soldier pit. Though I did learn some useful skills. Oh, I can tell. You could, uh, I swear, you could hit a, uh, the data pads off those guys if you wanted to. I'm glad you aimed for the heads, though. Yes, it's a bit more rewarding. Hey, Alex, these walls are, like, paper thin, right? Uh, they're not paper thin. You would not be able to hear this. You're, you're sleeping oh, in, come man. come on, but just to complete the shitty, <laughs> the shitty shit metaphor. This is not dark heresy. We're not held together by <laughs> fucking paper clips. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, as you do that... I'm gonna head into the yep. room. And you kind of wake up, and they kind of chill, and they talk for about an hour, and you wake up, and you kind of stretch, and it's a good day! You made, all, you made some good credits. Uh, Three thousand isn't isn't a bad haul for for your first job, uh, but in which case, we'll take a pause there as my or my kind of gets his food and sits down. You just see like the flashing on break still just flashing there in front of his pod, and we head over to to Mei Ling, uh, deeper into this uh, into the city, and you because it's not late night, it's about five in the afternoon. Um, you notice a lot of the new Helios PD. Uh, kind of driving about. So you mm -hmm. walk past, you notice uh, a lot of the unsavory folk, they see a cruiser, police cruiser, drive past. They all scatter immediately. And you hear the sounds of just city life kind of envelop around you. And you know, you turn the corner, you see a couple New Helios PD kind of kicking a man while he's down and shouting order, uh, shouting things that's kind of inaudible over the, just the the sound of the city just blaring in your ear from the trucks. Your audio receptor is kind of overloaded right now. And you come across a police officer walking up to you. And behind him is this about eight foot tall metal construct. Big hulking arms and it's just massive. Uh, think, of our, think of the Iron Giant, but human sized, but eight feet tall. Mm -hmm. Looking at you dressed, uh, dressed in the green and purple colors of the new, new Helios PD. And says, evening, madam, just be careful in the streets out there, unsavory folk. And it's kind of ended by a cadence of a man screaming in pain down the hall or down the down the alleyway where you notice the other two officers kind of kicking this man. Hmm. He just says that to you. Yeah. Um, officer, could you maybe help me with some directions? Absolutely. Kind citizen. Um, I'm looking for, um... Like a greenhouse or a nursery, um, the 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 fauna, the flora on this planet is amazing, and I was hoping to take some back with me. Um, I haven't really had any luck finding anywhere I could get some. Citizen, I need to remind you of the law about plants leaving the the uh, uh, plants leaving the planet. Oh, I, she kind of blinks in surprise and says, "Uh." Forgive me, uh, of course. Emily. All plants belong to Vertec Pharmaceuticals. Uh huh. I may introduce you to them and point them in the right direction. May I know your name, please? And he kind of takes out, um, he, his hand opens and there's like a, a holographic display coming out from his palm as if like he's writing in a journal, but it's not there. And his hands are over the keypad, looking at you, smiling, with this very practiced smile, wanting you to, uh, to give him your name. Uh 
See, the thing is, if Mei Lang tells him his full name, I'll know what kind of make and model she is. You can just say Mei Lang. Yeah, okay, she'll just say Mei Lang. And you type in Mei Lang and says, Are you from this planet, citizen? Uh, no, I'm a visitor. Oh, a visitor. May I know the name of your ship, please? Uh, Sorry and Swallow. And cross-references, and he looks, and there's a moment... He looks at you, and you notice um, his right eye is a shutter click. Thank you. You may now follow me. And uh, everything closes, and uh, the ro- the giant robot stands behind him, just kind of steps to the side, and he, he shows you this path. It's about another hour, and points you at this very tall... Very tall, it like, kind of pierces the clouds above. Normally, it would pierce the clouds above, but it's a kind of a clear day, a nice clear evening tonight. Uh, and at the very top, you just see this, it's a pristine building. There are no windows, but it's designed with like, a glass that can become a window. You know, it's like small circles kind of popping and peppering. They kind of open and close like blinks, uh, depending if people want to have a window there or not. Very, very high tech. And as I reach the skies, you just see a, a rotating kind of green name, uh, Vertec Pharmaceuticals, just rotating around it. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is your destination, Mei Ling of the Soaring Swallow. Thank you, and I hope you have a good evening. Stay out of trouble! And he kind of walks away and again gives you that practice smile and walks off. Okay, kind of give him like a side eye as you walk to the side, like that was weird. It, yeah, and you notice as um, it's walking away that the robot's head just turns like a 180, and while he's walking around the direction, just looking at you, and just, it's blinking at you a few times as you give it a side glance, and after a few feet, it, its head reels back straight forward and walks down. All right, well, mm, I guess I'm going to go into the building. Uh, well, you got to go meet security first, and there's oh, about... Oh, well, I guess I got to go talk to security. <laughs> yeah, and there's about eight men kind of standing there, and one of them says, what is your business here, madam? Uh, hi, my name is Mei Ling. I'm a xenobonologist. Uh, I was hoping you got, uh, uh, what was the name of the pharmaceutical company again? Vertec Pharmaceuticals. I was hoping uh, Vertec Pharmaceuticals would be uh, willing to let me uh, come in and take a look at um, the facilities. And kind of looks at you. We are not offering visitors today, but you may wait in the lobby and someone and a representative will speak to you. Cool. Great. And uh, as uh, the doors open and they allow you in, two of the guards kind of follow you and flank both your sides as you're entered into this large, pristine white lobby and there are fauna and, and leaves kind of growing among the, the pillars, kind of reaching up to the ceiling and their vines kind of ex- like leave out along the ceiling and they spread out. It's almost like you're inside of a tree. You know like the, um, you know in, what is it, what, where is it? In the Philippines. There is those metal constructs with leaves and trees growing in them? No. Well, you should look it up, because one, okay. it's beautiful, and two, it's very much like that. So like the white and the That's metal- Singapore. Sing- yeah, sorry, Singapore. Uh, the Singapore, like the um, like they have almost uh, metal scaffolding, but wooden and metal scaffolding, and all these beautiful green plants with flowers that seem to just be in perfect shape all the time along that area and it's very gorgeous and you walk in and at the end you notice three uh three three men um typing on their hollow pads and one of them looks up yeah very much like that but on in an interior that is juxtaposed by pure white um lighting oh wow definitely bucket list to go there but anyways moving on Okay, so there's there's two receptionists? Three male receptionists right there. All right, um, I guess I'm gonna approach the desk. And as you approach the desk, the two men uh, leave your flank and go back to the entrance. Yes. Hello, how may I help you today, Madame Zelle? Uh, hi, my name is Mei Ling. Um, I'm a xenobonologist uh, from Off Planet. Uh, and I've heard, uh, I've seen your advertisements about your, uh, your, uh, pharmaceuticals and the plants they derive from, and I was hoping, um, you would permit me to do a cursory study of them. And, um, the, the man kind of, his eye, his red eye, the, it's not inside of his eye, but, like, there is, you know, like, the scouters from Dragon Ball Z? Uh-huh. Uh, there's one that kind of 
envelops over his right eye is like Google Glass, and there's some information scattering on it. It scrolls up really quickly, and it blinks a few times. I apologize. Most of our researchers are not in-house at the moment, uh, but please feel free to take a seat, and our representative will speak with you for space. Thank you. I'm going to go sit and down. There are no chairs there, but you mm-hmm. notice as the man presses his finger behind the counter, a almost um, a white chair that is enveloped with these green leaves kind of comes up from underneath the ground, allowing you to sit there. Cool. And go ahead. And you sit there, and I'm going to put a pause on that for now. We go back to the, uh, the rest of the crew and the Soaring Swallow. And as the three of you kind of enjoy your late breakfast, lunch, whatever it is, you got a blip. Blinner. Your blinner, yeah. And you got a you got a blip, and it's, uh, and all over the intercoms you hear Charles' voice. E- and even though uh, Charles is the uh, the name of the the butler, uh, Charles Mark fourteen. Uh, even though his his things are on break. So well, it seems that you all have a call coming in, since no one is at the bridge, and it just the call the the intercom shuts off, and you just hear beep 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 up, uh, on the bridge. What do you guys do? I suppose we should handle that. I'm gonna go take Ignore a look. it. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's his job. Yeah, you're right. It's it is indeed Miles' job. Hey, we actually I'm I'm saying that we had Blini. <laughs> Blini. Right? Blini really good. And you head to the bridge. My coffee yet. Uh, but I guess if I'm we're eating poorly, then it's just sour cream, which is fine. No, you're eating fine. It, it, it's like. It's like well, I mean, basically, so it's not like we have fish or anything to eat with. Our no, meal. you're not. This is mostly soy products. Most of the food in space. Yeah. Like, uh, but uh, s- soymen. God. <laughs> <laughs> so you hear the blip, and uh, the an intercom opens up, but there is no image. It's just uh, the uh, it's just the voice. And the voice, like you know, like the uh, when when you have audio recordings, those, those like inflection inflections of a voice recording. Yes. And it says, "Hello, is this the soaring swallow?" I push the home button. Yes. You have a package of one audio file at the entrance of your ship. Feel free to retrieve that audio file at your earliest convenience. It is to the soaring swallow from Uncle. That is all. Stops. I'll close the channel. You close the channel. It seems to be like a like a automated recording from the from the uh, from the star star starport itself. Well, it seems something has been delivered to our. Uh... Uh, do we have like a just think have like a uh, airlock or a? Uh, yeah. So uh, if you if you look over here. That's kind of like the main entrance where like a bridge comes down. Okay. Uh, that's where the air. Does it like? It, this is the upper floor up here. Yes, that's the upper floor, How and this is. Are these the stairs there. down? Uh, the stairs down is by. I, how do you get down? Yeah, there? The, how do we get down there? Right, well, here, here's okay. I already got this, and just tell me if this works, because I kind of already figured it out in my head while you guys were talking. Because I had the exact same question already. Um, so like you kind of go down here, you know, through the empty bay into the crew quarters. Here is uh, the stairs. No, you that's know, the washroom. The, actually, the recreation area has the stairs going down to here. And this okay, is like the is upper. Right. And this is like the upper ramparts. And this entire, like, you see where the dotted line is? That's like a walkway on the upper ramparts. And there's ladders. Oh, I see. And ladders going down to this giant cargo hold because this is a free trader ship. And uh, it's a it's a forty by sixty kind of like spread of uh. Okay. Area. Well, it's uh, 40, yeah. Okay. Uh, don't worry about the feet. I gotta, don't worry about that. No, but it's accurate. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, um, yeah, you can totally, there's a like recreation, like there's stairs going down. You gotta walk down to the upper ramparts. But where it is right now is like uh, this other, uh, this other little small square dotted line that's like where the um, where the ship entrance is, where, the, where it kind of comes down. Like a little walkway comes yeah, down. Yeah, it's a walkway, yeah. like you can drive things up there to like a, like a tractor, or not a tractor, uh, you haul. What is it? Why are they called forklifts? Forklifts. That's the word. Truck. Yeah, you think of forklifts. Truck. Or forklift. Okay, yeah. That's like it's, we, we were calling trucks vans or vans yeah, trucks yeah, or something don't, last yes, session. That was yes. I don't know cars, man. I don't know cars. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Just just describe the vehicle, and I can yeah, get you the yeah, word that you want. Thank you. But moving on. So what do you guys do? Well, I'm going to uh, just slowly my way through the 
the rec room down the yeah down the stairs up down to the, the cargo room. hold and they're like yep. we've got a delivery oh really is it, is it a good one from don't know yet. gonna check it it's from a boss oh and uh you press gonna the... stand up in the walkway up here yep. and you press the side of the where the airlock is and a few minutes passes like the air escapes and the the walkway comes down and there is a small droid that is there that's just hovering with a small parcel out of the cardboard out of all things kind of it's holding it in i'm sorry is it corrugated cardboard whatever that is <laughs> it's in cardboard. Uh, but anyways <laughs> it looks at you and it just do i have permission to enter your ship you can just walk down the walkway and take it it just because i uh, you, suppose you do it flies up and uh, the parcel is kind of levitating in the air because being held up by this magnetic force um, and kind of drops it in your hands. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you for using New Helios Starport Services. And turns and flies away. That's it. And inside this cardboard box, you just feel like it's not that heavy. It weighs like four pounds. Well, I, I hope it. You open it, and inside is a tape recorder. Huh. What is this? Uh, a very archaic piece of technology. Is this very archaic? But it doesn't look as advanced. Hmm. Perhaps if I press this... There's, like, a whole bunch of side buttons on there, and you notice, like, there's there's this strange kind of looking re rectangular plastic thing with a ribbon, like this black ribbon wrapped around it. Where is Mei Ling? She would know something about this. And uh, Maybe we should pull on the ribbon. And uh, the ribbon is inside, and it's inside this this uh, almost this cassette tape recorder. You guys out of character know what it is, but along the side uh, there's like play, rewind, stop, fast forward. It, there's a play. Is there a record button? There there is not a record button, but there is like a small little uh, little almost post-it note. Press this button, just in an arrow. Pointing towards the play button. Hmm, I don't usually trust notes that tell me to press a certain button, but I guess since it's from the boss, in this case, it's fine. I push the button. And uh, there's some static in. I brace for impact. <laughs> there's not, nothing. You just hear a voice, and it's all the voice that you're all familiar of. And for some, like, remember, the entire time you've been in the employ of Uncle, you've never seen him. You've only heard him, or gotten misses, messages from him, missives from him. And you hear his voice, and says, ah, it looks like you got the job done, got the credits, everything settled. Great work, everyone. Uh, the whole thing with the ship, though, uh, I've been thinking, all of you have done great work for me, and I know that you this was your last job. As a parting gift for all the years of service that you worked for me, the ship is now yours. If you enter this, um, enter the, uh, this code, uh, and inside the box you notice inside there's a small piece of paper with a code, and you enter the code into the bridge, you can rebrand the ship and do whatever you want to it. It's yours. No maintenance and all that stuff, you, just, you, you deal with that. Too much paperwork for me. But anyways, I digress. But, uh, you're all free now. You all did great work, and I appreciate that. And fair is fair. Last was your last job. By all means, stay safe. And uh, feel free to write. If you find me, that is, I think. So, somewhere there's a message or an email or a Dropbox or a mailbox, whatever. And kind of goes on for like five minutes rambling until finally he says, Though there is one thing, uh, engineer owes me a favor. Uh, sector, sector 505. Um, actually, I'll make a mark over here. A star map. Zip. Sector 505, he owes me a favor. You can do some renovations on the ship, make it a bit more your own. But it's up to you. Feel free to head over there. Uh, he goes by the name of Henrik Obadiah. Just send, tell tell him Uncle sent you guys. He'll he'll hook you up with something real nice. And he goes on for a little bit more. Two minutes pass. How the fuck do I turn off this thing? And then it clicks. <laughs> nice. It's not going to blow up. On well, this, though, is it? Um, it appears that Uncle has given us a ship. This ship, in fact. Also, we released from Wicked Contacts for him. I suppose that means everyone kind of knew. Uh, everyone knew that this was the, the last job with him. Yeah, we did talk about that. I honestly, didn't expect him to give us the ship. Neither did I. 
maybe this means we can rename it. Yeah, I can do whatever you want, name whatever you want. I like my like the name, but <laughs> if you insist. Well, um, hmm. Kind of at a loss. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with the shit. I guess we. It's not like he exactly gave it to one of us. Yeah, that kind of. <laughs> I guess that means we're sticking together for the near future. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not I willing guess. to split apart a ship. It's, it's not like we can. Oh, we could sell really it, but uh, we wouldn't get near what it's worth, though. Oh, no, not even close. Well. And uh, I mean, if it means anything, my vote would be against that. All right. Well, uh, mine as well, actually. Uh, he did mention in a friend uh, in that sector that could make some uh, adjustments for us, so. I'm gonna, I'm like leaned over the sort of the railway. We have railways got like, yeah, we have, we have, like, we have a protect, protective, yeah, it's, it's safe. <laughs> I'm like leaning on the handrail and shrug my shoulders, like, well, I mean, we could probably find work on the way, too. <laughs> like, it's uh, like not exactly a short trip. But yeah, well, you, you notice inside of the code and you see like this um, 25 uh, numerical uh, character code of random assorted things. It's really long, it's also really annoying to put in, but you know, it's a code. Um, that you can... Uh, written in, for the first time, in Uncle's handwriting, insert this code. It's incredibly neat. And written in incredibly very elegant and beautiful cursive handwriting. Cursive still around? No. Which is what makes it very unique. I can't read this. Yeah, it's very hard to read it. I kind of stare at it. We need Mei Ling here. <laughs> Where's Mei Ling? <laughs> uh, Mei Ling is actually not uh, kind of uncontactable right now because of uh, the fact that her data slate is out of commission and she hasn't gone back home to uh, yeah, yeah. Um, back up her Reset new one. It back up. Yeah. 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 Because you would definitely have to physically interface with well, our Well, in the meantime thing, that you're right? waiting, uh, you're probably downloading all the apps that you normally would have. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but it's a new number, so you have to like add everyone again, or be added in... We have to sync it up. Yeah, oh, so we, we, have we a, don't know your number. You said we have an internal anything. system. Yeah, yeah, you don't exactly. know your number. I have like, way... um, a backup on the ship. Like, May is yeah. the kind of person who would re regularly back up everything she has, yeah. but... Uh, that's on the ship, and I'm not yeah. there. Well, yeah. the way it was described is we have a setup to the ship itself. Yeah, it's because yeah. It's, it's your proximity to the ship that matters to your yeah. connection to but our system. But mailing does not yeah. have access to the central yeah. uh, communications array. But anyways, moving on. Yeah, that would make what sense. So she wouldn't have been getting my messages. Got it. Nope, nope. Exactly. I mean, we're still at her, but like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can like message undelivered notifications. <laughs> we again, need yeah. you. How do we read this? <laughs> Uh, she's not responding to messages, and, uh, we're getting the error back. I'm not, uh, comfortable with that. Uh, she wasn't here when I woke up, so I'm a little concerned now. No, hold on. I bet she didn't sync up her new compad to the system. Do you think she was kidnapped? Probably not. <laughs> Should we call the police, or that? whoever the local authority is? Uh, I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> I don't think we've done anything that would warrant an arrest for us. And no. another blip over the intercom. Uh, this time it's Charles' voice. It says, Oh, you seem to be all popular people today. Here I am just trying to take a nap. His voice changed, by the way. He changes voices all the time. Uh, That's cool. And says, uh, But you got a visitor. He's out there, apparently. Nothing else better to do but to talk to a bunch of random... Well, I'll keep that last part to myself. And we have another, another visitor. Oh, I go get my cloak. Can I check? Like, is there a you camera? You can see on the uh, there is the, you can see like there's like a camera and you can check okay. outside. Yeah. And you notice uh, a man dressed in humble worker's clothing, blue collar stuff, kind of there with a small data slab, looking through some things, and uh, he just presses like there's a there's a terminal to hail you guys, as if he's like ringing a doorbell almost. All right, I will. Uh... Oh, you can talk through the the, 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 the the terminal, you can talk to him. So you don't actually have to go outside and talk to him. Yes, can I help you? 
much. Oh, hey, uh, sorry about that. I don't mean to disturb you so around this time, and that was usually dinner, but uh, I've been looking around some ships in the starport and looking for a ship that can carry a bunch of cargo for a job, uh, if you guys are interested. Yeah, I open the airlock. You open the airlock and... Oh, well... Uh, you, you have your cloak on, Silkis, and uh, I assume uh, Mike is still up there, just kind of hanging around the ramparts, just looking down as yes, we're opening again. And the door opens, and the man has a is wearing a is wearing a baseball cap that's dusty and old, and he's wearing. And you notice on his um, on his left, uh, like he's wearing a vest in the left uh, part of the chest. Um, you notice one second. Oh, I thought it, wait, no, there it is. Uh, and you notice on the thing it says Jones Metalworks. Uh, right there, and he kind of walks in, and he he, uh, he waits for the airlock to come down the bridge, and it's a permission to enter your ship. Mm-hmm, granted. Uh, thanks, Con sir, and he kind of walks up, uh, outside the ship, and uh, he sees out a small compad, and one hand has a data slab, and the other hand has a compad. Uh, right. So, uh, pretty nice ship you got here. Lots of cargo space. He kind of looks around the cargo area, you guys sees sees Mike, gives him a nod with the baseball cap, like good day, sir. Not bad. And he sees a, a coax figure over there. Also gives you a nod and says, uh, "Evening." Um, very nice, cordial kind of kind of gentleman. And says, All "Right, well, I'll keep this short so you can go back to your evening." But uh, got a large shipment of bulk metals, about 80, 80 tons of metal, uh, transporting over to a sector. think we have capacity. Let me check our capacity. You have 100 tons of capacity. It's actually a lot. It's 80 tons. Zip. Can we uh, Google, like, the uh, name Yeah, if you go stuff? to the bottom left. I see. Zero Each. of 100, yes. Each. Yeah. Could we, like, uh, do a Google-type search on... You can, you can totally do a search. Yeah, but, I'd like uh, to do yeah. a search on it. And, uh, also, what's the sector? He didn't say the number. Oh, he hasn't said the number on purpose. He's just, you know, doing just a stock. Just the, oh, stuff yeah, the so uh, what sector? And you say up to them, oh, yeah, um, uh, sector, sector 506 is in the public space. <laughs> of course it is. Um, and who are we delivering it for? Uh, United Republic. Bulk metal's supposed to go into one of their ships, apparently. All right. Got hired to do this job. Unfortunately, uh, my ship's out of commission, and none of the other ships in the Star Bay have enough capacity to carry this. Can we just walk into the Republic base? You guys are neutral. You, uh, like, the ship is neutral. I mean, we I would, mean, like, have to go through... Do we need clearance or and shit. Do, do we have codes, anything like that, that we would need to get into this location? Uh, this is neutral space right now, so... Um, there oh, is so a, it's, it's a neutral space. I'm sorry. It's neutral space. So, look, 506, no, 506 is, a, is not... 506 no, is in Republic space. Yeah, 506, 506 is in Republic, yeah. But it's an empty sector. There's no planets there. So it's kind of like... Ah. Uh, there will be Republic people there. And uh, he kind of like takes off his cab and says, "All right, uh, I can tell. Uh, mean no disrespect, but you guys anti Republic." I look up and I just I cock my head to the side, confused. Unaffiliated. Unaffiliated. That, that's also why I approached you guys. There were no signs or any signals on your ship. Look. I know we're close to, to, to Nova Commonwealth, whatever. This 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 war, this this last whatever rebellion there is has nothing to do with me. I'm just trying to make a living. All right, got to pay my men, got to pay my uh, got to pay my bills. A lot of men working for me in the mines. This metal is our ticket to to, to, to Eaton. So, so why is your ship unable to transport this metal? Well, I'm I'm sure you know of some unsavory folk in the nearby area. Sorry, we are just new here. Well, not everyone's yeah, a city like this. You got to be more specific than that if you want me to know who you're talking about. Fair point, but I don't want you guys getting wrapped in something you don't have to get into. But fair enough. Um, people, unsavory folk, well, to me at least, uh, they don't like the Republic. You know, we were selling to the Republic, so they trashed my ship. Simple as that. That's my problem, not yours. Hmm. Oh, I see. We're being paid to keep your contract. In other words, yes. Fair pay. Okay, so you got all what, of the, uh... What the, is the pay? Uh, yeah. The, the, it says, kind of looks and it goes through. Um, right, well... Can, can we see the contract first? I'd like to know how much you're stand to make. Well, absolutely. Uh, give me one second to check that real quick. Oh, I had the page open already, and then I was looking around some stuff. Damn it. 
Hold on. Welcome to GMing. Yeah, welcome to GMing. Give me a hot minute here. Just to double check to make sure that I'm giving you guys a fair, definitely a fair pay. Uh... Alright, so... Uh... Take a look at the contract, and there's a lot of very specially crafted metal made in a certain way. You don't know what it looks like because the, the cargo isn't here. But you notice, Republic, um, it, everything looks legit. Uh, United Republic has transferred over 20,000 credits to Jones Metalworks. And uh, and he's saying, well, Thanks. that's the credit, 20,000. Uh, we made the metal, we did everything, we did the processing. We'll be paying you the transport. Um, 3,500 credits. Would you be sending any of your men with us? Nope, just the cargo. Off we trust you. Uh, yeah, hold on. Yeah, hold on a second. a second. Do you think that these folks who trashed your ship are liable to attack again? Honestly, I don't know. I'm out of options here. We, we're done with the metal. It costed us a lot of money and a lot of time, and we're running out of time. Yo, yo, Miles, we gotta get hazard pay for this bullshit. I mean, you can't just, like... This isn't just a normal transportation job. Listen, I took care of. We're, we're putting our ship on the line, right? This is yeah. No, <laughs> we're not the, exactly transporting hamburgers here. That's a fair point. Listen, uh, I don't want to waste too much more of your time, but the office still stands. You guys can all talk amongst yourselves, do what you need to do. I'll be at the only leak uh, for the rest of the night, maybe tomorrow night too. Uh, this is my contact information. Uh... Only leak is a is a bar. You just Google it up. It's yeah. a bar. And well, so I mean, like, would Daniel be able to try to haggle with this guy, or? Oh, you can you can totally do that, but like, you have to actually yeah. accept the contract. And right, he's giving you like the short-term spiel for that. I see. And uh, and also kind of sort of a way where I'm telling you that it's uh, you don't have to take it right away. It's just kind of like mm -hmm. he's being very respectful about this, and but you notice that there's a bit of desperation in his eyes, like he's kind of you know in a tight spot right now. Look, I understand. Yeah, this guy's like super formal. I understand you need to uphold the contracts, and we are definitely interested in taking this job, but uh, we are currently missing a crewmate, and I'd like to confer with everyone before we uh, make a decision, so we will meet you there later. With, Absolutely. Uh, um, take all the time. You can Look, I, I understand it's a bit of a last-minute thing, and if it were done through proper channels, I, I understand, but just trying to get my men paid. All right, we all worked hard for this. But here's my contact information, and it takes out his compad and kind of taps it against yours, and it transfers over the information. As you all have a good night. And uh, puts back his cap and walks off, and that's it. He's gone. <laughs> Thirty-five hundred for a twenty thousand dollar contract. No, well, hold on. That sounds about right, just for the uh, just transport. Yeah, because they've, they've you know, made if everything. there was no chance of us being shot at. Perhaps we could see if they pay us more money to take care of these people. Mm, I'm not looking to get into another firefight. Uh, I mean, maybe, no, no, it's not like the Swallow's really built for combat. No. It I'm has... a pretty good pilot, but I don't really want to get into an engagement. I'd rather avoid that. We should be asking for 5k straight up for, uh... And that is where I'm know, going to put a pause this. in that, and we're going to head back to melee, okay? Hi. So we pan the camera back to Melan. You've been sitting there for about 30 minutes, and eventually a very beautiful um, woman steps from an elevator, a door, well, behind an elevator, a door opens up. About six foot tall, very tall, slender, brunette hair, uh, wrapped in a beautiful bun uh, with pure white clothing um, accented by the green jewelry and green bracelets, as if almost mimicking the, 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 the lobby itself. And she walks up with a data slab of herself, and she looks at you, and then she looks at uh, the, the gentleman, the one that you spoke to earlier, and the gentleman points over, and the woman nods, walks over, and she says, hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I kind of stand up, and I hold up my hand to shake her hand. Ah, uh, yes, and she, she shakes her hand. My name is Professor Verano. I am one of the um, representatives of Vertec Pharmaceuticals. How may I help you today? Uh... Do you guys think Melanie has, like, a doctorate? She probably went to school. Yeah, she went to school. Yeah, she went to school. You're educated in this. Uh, it's not like you haven't had the time to do it. Yeah. No, you're definitely educated in this. You would have a doctorate in this. Yeah, okay. Um, hi, I'm Dr. Uh, Mailing. Uh, uh, I'm a xenobotanologist with a focus in, uh, uh, well... Botany. Botany. Yes. 
Um, and um, I I heard about uh, the restorative capabilities of the plants on this planet, and uh, I was hoping while I was here I could get a look at them. Ah, yes. Unfortunately, we are not accepting any visitors today. We're in a bit of a, how should you say, critical moment in our in our quarterly um, findings. Although, I have um, checked into you, Dr. Mei Ling. Very impressive. You might have studied that you have. Um, you, you're here on the Soaring Swallow, correct? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, unfortunately, again, I cannot offer you my services today. You're more than welcome to come back at the end of the week once, uh, once the quarter is finished. Would you like me to pin you in? Uh, yes, could I make an appointment? That would be lovely. All right, and then seven days, and, and a week later, she kind of pins you in, pins her name. And uh, although, uh, I, I hope this isn't too disrespectful, but this is a bit of a double entendre. I would like to hire your services. Oh. Uh, what's, what would you like? What do you have in mind? Well, um, uh, Vertec Pharmaceuticals is looking for protection detail to excavate materials in the Shinsu jungle. And uh, as as she says that, she kind of takes over and uh, puts presses a few buttons on her data pad. You know, this, a, on the world map opens up and you, there's a green blip of where Vertec Pharmaceuticals is. And about a few days travel south, there's a big thick jungle um, that kind of is up along a archipelago uh, of the planet. Uh, she says, um, just a simple protection detail. The area is non-hostile, but is semi-dangerous in terms of terrain. Uh, and uh, you notice there's a blinking 3.1 on the ED scale there. Uh, and the 3.1 is, just double checking my notes here, is, um, and you know this, but just for everyone else, the ED scale stands for the Environmental Dangers Index, and L3 represents weather can cause high damage to structures. Examples include bad storms or twisters, a few dangerous environmental hazards, such as an active volcano, or possibly some aggressive and threatening wildlife, but it can be defended against. That's a 3.1 on the ED scale. So, as a... Uh, uh, if your crew would like to help us out, then uh, be more than welcome. You'll be handsomely paid for this bodyguard duty, and afterwards you are more than welcome to to our facilities. That's a, a very tempting offer. I'll have to take it back and talk to my crew about it, but... Uh, that thank is, you very much for the offer. Absolutely. It was a pleasure to meet you, uh, Dr. Mailing. I hope to be in contact with you soon. Here's my contact info. And she sticks out a hand, um, um, presses, you, you press your finger, or not the finger, like, you, you exchange information to your yeah. new data slip. Yeah. And with that, well, have a good evening. And she turns around and she goes back. Do All right. And I'm going to leave the building, um, check in with security and let them know I'm leaving. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, they and... follow you out. No problem there. Uh, I thank them for their uh, kind escort, and I, uh, uh, I'm going to see about getting back to the ship. Yep. And you get back to the ship a few hours later, and as you get back to the ship, everyone, are you guys in the recreation area talking about the stuff in the cargo hold? Probably the recreation area. Yeah. Talking the rec about area is kind of like the central area where you guys kind of hang out. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to clean my gun, and uh, we're, we're going to mm. wait for Maylene to get back. Yep. Eventually, Mailing gets back. You don't have to open the door because she has her own code and she can put that in. Of course. Right, and she and you hear the the, the thing open up, and uh, you hear over the intercom. It seems that Mailing has returned, finally, and puts off his trousers. Oh, thank God! We don't have to just go look for her. Ugh, we didn't have to file a police report. And uh, Mailing, you know, Mailing. and you head back up to the. Like, yeah, I'm heading yeah, up. Like the, before plank, she plank, says plank, anything. Plank. Yes, yeah, before she says anything, like, hey, you forgot to sync back up with the, uh, the data core. Yeah, did that on purpose, and she holds up her new, uh, data slate and goes to sync up with, uh, the computer. Oh, thanks for leaving a note. No problem, you were asleep. I roll my eyes. <laughs> At least she made it back in one piece. You right. notice that it's been, like... We were debating filing a police report. Missing persons report. I don't think that would have been necessary, but I appreciate your concern. Anyway. Oh, so. we got a job offer. Oh. Oh, we also got a job offer. No, that was Silka saying we got a job offer. Oh, whoops. It's okay. I'm very, I'm very sorry. Yeah. Wow, that, yeah, your Silka said that second really sounded like Mooney. It kind of did. Huh. That's fucked up. You know, uh, I talk in third person now. 
<laughs> Anyways, uh, keep going. Um, yeah, so, oh, you got a job offer. Um, so did I. Uh, and she, uh, pulls up the contact information of the, uh, the Vertac re representative. Um, uh, Vertac, um, the, the pharmaceutical company that we're not for us off this planet, um, is doing uh, a harvesting operation over here, and she kind of uh, opens up a, a map, some maps, and uh, taps over to uh, the area in question. Um, it's uh, mildly dangerous, it might be like storms and like wild animals. Uh, she wants us as protection uh, security for the, 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 the workers. Uh, which normally I wouldn't do, but she looks up and you guys can see, like, pure desire in her robotic eyes. And she's like, I really want to investigate these plants. And they're going to let me have a tour of the facility afterwards. How much are they paying? How, did they say how much they were paying? No. Nope. Nope. Did not ask. Um, handsomely. <laughs> yeah, that's what they said. What is that? I, you know what? Yeah, what I number forgot is to that? ask. You forgot to ask how much they're going to pay us for a job. Mainly, we're going to have to uh, give you a crash course in uh, entrepreneurship. Listen, that's not what I was programmed for or studied. Would <laughs> you kind of laugh? Mm -hmm. And you send a message. Um, Do you send a message through your contact information? Um. I don't know, I feel like that might be unprofessional at this point. It was the... <laughs> yeah. Beach boy, beach boy, like how much are we paying? Pardon? Um... Do you send a message? Yeah. Uh, maybe you should give the details to Mike, or to Miles, and let him handle it. Alright, I'm gonna send the contact information offer to Miles. Cause then he can be like, you know, hello, this is Miles Sinclair, you know. CFO of whatever. CFO, <laughs> great, yeah. You probably, that seems like the kind of thing that Miles would do, he would call himself that. Or maybe that, maybe kind of, un maybe kind of ironically, I guess. Very ironically, he hates Corp. Very, very ironically. Corporation sick. Yeah. But like, um, just be like, hey, could we get the, you know, further details on this stuff, like, so that we can come to a final decision. But you, it, passing it over would allow us to make it look more professional. Yeah, let's type out our, our thing. All right, so a, a few moments pass, and it's actually kind of ridiculously fast how back you get the uh, response. And it says, oh, of course, understood. Apologies for not saying that at the start. 4,000 credits paid at the end of the uh, three-day expedition. Oh, I like this one. All right. Maybe we can make a deal with the guy. He's not going to pay us what we want, but maybe if we accept whatever he bargains up to, uh, he'll hold the job for us while we do this first. Uh, what guy? Right, so... <laughs> while you're away... Yeah, we got an offer to transfer some metal, uh, but it's going to the United Republic, and... The reason why we gotta transport it is because somebody trashed the guy's ship. She kind of does like the Spock eyebrow raise. Um. Yes, I am. Uh, I am ever so inclined to remain off radar with when it comes to the public or their enemies. I feel a bit bad for him, though. You know, these people I... destroyed his livelihood. I mean, no. I mean, uh, well, that's a shame. pretty fast. I could. I could probably get us out of uh, out of trouble if we got caught mid space. I'm more worried about uh, worried about getting off somebody the kind of trashing. Yeah, yeah, that. Also, I really don't want to stay here too much longer since we well might have we we might have uh, adversely affected the delicate power balance of uh, the local street gangs. And almost as if on cue, the intercom mm -hmm. opens up again. Oh my god. And it says, uh, this time, though, it is not the voice of Charles, but a robotic voice saying, this is the new Helios PD. We have a warrant for your ship, the Soaring Swallow. You have one hour to comply. I'm sorry, a warrant for what? For entry. For, for entry? Yes, if you noticed earlier, people have been asking, do I have permission to enter your ship? We can, uh, 
You said an hour? Yeah, just... I mean, like, if it, you know the, 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 an image opens up and you notice that they're... In the time that mailing has come back, and you've all talked about this. A few officers, though, they're not really threatening right now. You notice one man just standing there in, in a relaxed army pose with arms behind his back. He's standing there, uh, and uh, one of his hands is sticking out and there's, like, orange and, like, seeking entry. Yeah. Well. Uh, so, what are the what are the full details of the warrant? Do the warrants? Uh, they just want to talk to you guys. They just. It, they it's just. It's just entry. Entry yeah. and like in, uh, mm -hmm. inter Not interrogation. Maybe would be the word. But uh. Entry. Questioning. Yep. Entry and questioning. I mean, I'm am fine with that. We actually do not have anything illegal on the ship. You do not. So. Um, mailing kind of like uh, kind of like mm, scrunches or ever stuff. Like I had a mild uh encounter with the police officer, but I didn't. Expect anything to come hey, from it. Hey, wait a minute, guys. What about all the uh, the stuff we took from them? You, you know, do that, have some. You do the, have some Republic weapon we the guy. but it's in the armory oh, and it's sealed. It's how to say. Yeah, they're not. They they don't. The warrant has no. They got no power to search. They don't know. have any search. They, they, they have they, to come back with a new warrant. Yep, they do. They just have um, a warrant just for entry onto the ship. So yeah. just like let him into the cargo bay and talk to him. Yeah, yeah do you so guys head down to the cargo bay? Yeah, so we'll head down to the cargo bay. I get my cloak and, and I head on down. You head on down and uh... No, I don't know if they're gonna like it. And uh, you press open the, the cargo bay doors and uh, four gentlemen enter. Um, four gentlemen and one very tall, very tall robot that you recognize from earlier, and it's the same man, and he's smiling, and they all have this practice smile, except for one of them, who is... Um, the other dre are dressed in um, in police clothing, like your typical kind of like you know, beat cop kind of stuff, but the other one is dressed in the suit. Uh, but he does flash a very, very big laser pistol on the side, and he kind of walks in, kind of... Sniffs his nose and walks up and says, Sir, good evening. Sorry to disturb you so late at night. It's about seven, eight in the evening. Um, and so, uh, got a, got a warrant in your ship and also see if you guys want to come down to the station. We have a few questions. A, bit of, a few um, bodies on the outskirts. You guys don't happen to know about that, do you? Not at all. Bodies on the outskirts. So you have no idea about those? No, I'm afraid we don't. We were here to deliver uh, medical supplies to the uh, hospital. All right, all right, all right. Okay, that's fine. Okay, well, it uh, looks like, though, um, the captain wishes to speak with you. And uh, we can always come back with a warrant for for a search warrant, because, you know, that's how we work. But um, you guys don't seem to care about you hiding anything in here, don't you? And he kind of, like, looks around the cargo bay, like, being very... Uh, verbose and just aggressive in his stance right now. Like, he's in your face right now, Miles. And the other three cops and the large robot are just standing there, um, arms behind their back, relaxed military pose. They're all kind of looking around, too. You can make this, uh, do this easy way or do this the hard way and come down to the station. It's up to you. I just kind of look towards Miles. I mean, it's his decision, but we should probably just do it. Just so you guys... How can... Is he able to, like, text with them there? Like, yeah, how, no, you won't be able to work? text with the... The only people able to text right now are the people out of sight. Is he even able to, like, check it? Like, no, yeah, he's, not, he he's not able to check it. No, I would be able to check it. You need something like that. Yeah. You would need something like that, yeah. Well, I'd be... So you didn't see anything that I wrote yet? Well, I'd be more than happy to go with you, but, uh... I do need to get the ship prepped for, uh, takeoff. Oh, take off! Where, where, so where are you guys going? Where are you guys going? You guys leaving already? So soon? You've only been here for about two days. Yes, Got all your we, business done? We, we, as you can see, our cargo holds empty. Okay, interesting, interesting. Well, uh, you're more than welcome, but uh, this is a cordial invite. We don't really don't want to come back here in force. Um, that's, why I'm off, that's why I'm offering to go with you. Me, I just need my crew here to make uh, the necessary arrangements. All right, well, you don't mind if... Uh, uh, we hang out here too, don't you? As long as you're outside and stay out of my crew's way. All right. Well, you're lucky that we don't have a warrant for that yet. But guys, you don't. As long as you don't leave, well, I don't think they're gonna leave without you, right? <laughs> and it looks up to where um, Mike and Mei Ling are as they're texting on their phones. 
Really? Start very, texting. Oh, She's uh, yeah, just a very boisterous laugh. And so, well, why don't you come with us? And uh, all the three of the other soldiers, they, they smile, their practice smile, and they all leave with the robot. Again, as, as walking away, the robot does a 180 on its head, the same thing like he recognized from earlier there, Mei Ling, and his eyes shudders a few times and then turns back and walks. Yeah, when they do that. Did they even notice me in the corner over here? They didn't notice you in the corner. They just didn't say anything. Okay. Okay, so... So, here's uh, what I'm thinking. in the future, maybe don't write down anything incriminating uh, over text. I, I haven't had a lot of experience with the law, but, like, texting here is a lie. Well, we have, we have a, first of all, we're, we're connected to the data core, so they can't even see They can't it. see it. No, this yeah, is completely like they, secure. No, no, this is, like, super like, secure, and they they would need to get access to our data core, and I would wipe it if they were going to do that. Okay. Yes. So um, do not worry about that. I mean, it probably uses push, and, like, it probably syncs back, so if, if you wipe the data core, you wipe everything. Yes. Anyways. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I'll go with I'll go with them. And so Marles, you you head into a police cruiser and you aren't you aren't like yeah. tied up or any or you're not handcuffed or anything. Um, you ride in the cruiser and uh, about an hour passes. You head down to one second. The... Do we get any message back from? Uh, oh, wait, no, what was the details of the thing again for the? For what? The mission that Mailing got. Oh, it's just four thousand credits. Uh, that's four thousand credits. Three day excavation three down days, to the uh, okay. to the jungle. All right, sorry, I'm trying to plan out here how we should be doing yeah, this, fine. 100%. and maybe going to go a, go ahead and do this oh. while Mike's handling that. Maybe or we Miles, could um, offer me. to lower the price a little bit if they get us out of this trouble. How much was the pay again? For four thousand. Four thousand credits. Four thousand. Yeah. Okay. Maybe if me and Silkus go and try to haggle uh, this transport guy up, and he gives a, if we can give him, like, maybe get him to do it for 4,000 and give us three days to do this, uh, then Mailing can maybe uh, try to cut a deal with this person to get us out of this pickle, unless Miles can just handle it. So we should do him first, and then. Uh, Come yeah. back to maybe me and me and Silkus at the bar. Sounds like a good plan. And um, if Miles is successful, we can just take the four thousand job that maybe was offered. Yes, and and we can just take that for full price and maybe get eight k total, which is like banging. Mm -hmm. All right, I won't have to feel bad about spending company money. And uh, Mike, or sorry, Miles, you're head down, and eventually you're led to the police station. All right, I'm not. <laughs> I'm sorry, they're adorable. I'm not a, uh, I'm not blindfolded or anything. No, no, no. no. You're, you're treated like an actual regular law-abiding citizen because you can go down. Because I'm looking around a lot at every nook and cranny. Yeah, you, you look all around at every nook and cranny, and uh, uh, you're actually riding in the same police cruiser as uh, the sergeant. He has actually introduced himself as uh, Sergeant Varick Indwald. And um, kind of leads you, and you go down this pristine, not pristine, like it's been dirty. You hear the sounds of men and women being tied up, or not tied up, like processed through um, through corrections. Because the, the police office, or the police station, is actually next to a very large prison. Right there. If you think about it, bureaucracy is a form of bondage. <laughs> hey. And uh, the, as you walk in, you notice these large, massive robots, about eight feet tall, um, they, they stand there, their weapons are at the ready, but their fingers are off the trigger. They're looking around, scanning. As you walk past one of them, though, one of the robots looks at you, and you hear a audible shutter click from its eyes. As it rests in, it rests eyes on you, and it goes back to doing its, you know, perimeter check and all that stuff. Oh, good. He took a picture of me. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes. And... I'm glad you put that idea into Alex's head last session. <laughs> Wait, who put that idea? Actually? I'm snapping, uh, uh, Mooney. I'm uh, snapping Mooney finger. I'm snapping finger guns right now. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, you're led down this hallway and you are in front of the captain's room, which is very large, like obscenely large. You enter and there is a man sitting behind a desk on 
a very large kind of holographic display and you hear typing. Is thank you, Sergeant. You can leave now. I can speak with him alone. Uh, and he does the, the sergeant does a salute. And he closes down the hologram display and he takes off the uh, the Google Glass thing, the future Google Glass from his temples. And he stand he uh, stands up and he approaches you and he offers to shake your hand. Hmm. My name is Captain Alabaster Kane. Welcome to my precinct. Captain Kane, I'll shake his hand. And you shake his hand, and you shake his hand, and uh, and he's waiting for you to introduce yourself. Miles Sinclair, the Soaring Swallow. Yes, and uh, he walks over and says, "Would you like something to drink?" And he goes over to uh, the, the his spirits. You notice like some alcohol, and you know, like the, the preppy stuff where they have like the glass thing, and next to it is like a nice bucket. Uh, I'll pass. We've actually just eaten. All right, yeah, your choice. And he pours himself a drink. Uh, he sits down and he presses a button on his table. One of the chairs, kind of from the corner, exits from a from the wall and it hovers over in front of the desk. And he says, "Please have a seat." I'll take a seat and then cross the legs in a relaxed pose. And cross legs in a relaxed pose, and he looks. So uh, he presses um, a few buttons on his desk and he shows a terminal, and you notice a very familiar sight of Hollow's Bog with a bunch of dead bodies there in the car smoking, like a police scene stuff. So you say you have nothing to do with this, don't you? I do. Interesting. Uh, and he says, around the time that this has happened, or forensics... I really wish you had gone with what my, my plan was. Damn it. Um, around the time of... Uh, around the time of their death, or in supposing their supposed altercation, we have footage of all of you leaving the city. And he puts up another kind of a uh, video and you see like, remember when you're driving back and forth from the city in, in the cars and stuff? There are stills of your faces in the cars. Timing seems oddly uh, coincidental, don't you say? Wait, is it of us in the doctor's car? Yes. What happened? Yeah, 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 it was like really obvious. Yeah, hold on, what happened to the doctor's car there? I don't remember what we did with it. Uh, you we gave it back. We it shut up and we drove it back into town, you fucking moron. That's why we can't just deny it. We have to make Whoa. up a way that makes sense. Whoa. Well, buddy, hold on. Damn. <laughs> it did get shut up. It got shut up real bad. Wasn't there a bomb that went off next to it? And we had yeah, grenades. Was pretty, it's a pretty bad condition, I can tell you guys that. It was in pretty bad condition. We have to make up something that makes sense. Just relax. Holy shit. And, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, no. So, so uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Was that too bombastic? Is that too much? You're fine. But anyway, it's going you're back fine. to uh, Alabaster Kane. Yeah, so, so you really have nothing to do with that. And he, he knows he's got your debt to rights. And it looks at you. Takes a sip from his bourbon. <laughs> Which now makes sense to capitulate anyway, because it's like, well, well, they got us. <laughs> Look, when I say it has nothing to do with us, <laughs> I mean we weren't the target. Roll a uh, roll a talk, please. Charisma. Uh, oh yeah, okay. Okay, go ahead. Roll a talk. Oh no. It's charisma, right? Yeah, charisma based on charisma. Okay. He kind of takes another sip from his bourbon, and uh, hold on, I actually have a glass on my table. Puts it back on his on his desk. Um, <laughs> kind of leans forward and looks at you and says, "Look, from my point of view, you did us a favor, but uh, as a man of the law, I have to abide by the law. New Helios PD mm, murder is pretty bad on our planet, even if it wasn't self-defense." I'm here to offer you something. Something for your services. See, you left a power vacuum in the underworld. In, in layman's terms, I can digress and go on, but... I guess you can say a favor for me, and I'll let this all slide. A favor? Yes. I'm listening. Well, uh... There's a nearby bunker, 
And he presses on the table again and shows up the map about uh, a day or two's travel away from the um, from the cities nearby the edge of the outskirts by the by the slums. Um, there's something of value to me in there. A disc, or not a disc, uh, the the future version of a USB, uh, portable USB, like a data slab. A data slab. Yeah, data, a data store. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a data store. Retrieve it. Bring it back to me. And all of this is done. He kind of claps his hands as if, you know, like, sort of like, you know what I mean. He drinks uh, from the bourbon, again, sips from the bourbon, kind of leans back in a relaxed pose, kind of mirroring your own, and he looks at you. So, do we have a deal? I have no problem with that, honestly, but uh, I do have one question. You said a bunker? Yes. Who's bunked in the bunker? Well, uh, he presses another thing and a bunch of words come up, or a bunch of names come up, and you notice uh, there is indeed a bunch of men who are there, armed. Remember, see. Remember the gang that you had dealt with? I mean, you know, of course you have nothing to do with this, so nothing to know about this, but that gang that just so happened to die as you guys left and exited the town, or city. Um, yes. The remains of them. Especially considering that they probably also have footage of them following us when we left the town the first time. Yeah, I mean, car, relax. I, I already knew we were, basically, we were basically done, so that's fine. <laughs> that's fair. But um, feel free to accept, feel free to deny, but uh, just know that uh, they're looking for who's ever responsible for this. Be a shame if uh, that information got leaked. Oof. Well, sounds like we really did create a power vacuum. Well, I mean, of course you have nothing to do with it, but anyways, and uh, he presses the button, and all the uh, all the visual cues or uh, the monitors just go off. And... Let me ask him: Do you have a this, this bunker? I mean, this is it a building they just occupied, are you familiar with it? Do we have any schematics on it? Anything to help us would be, uh, I mean, a great benefit to you. Roll a talk. Okay. All right. Hey. Uh, so with that, he kind of shows you well. As a member of the law enforcement, uh, providing such military and architectural schematics is well, very illegal. You cut them off. Yeah, uh, you cut them off. But considering this is a favor, let's see what I can do. I'll have that sent over to you at my earliest convenience. Let me give you my number. Oh, I already have it. It's all right. Mm, very good. Well, I think we're done here. If you would be so kind to escort me back to my ship so I can inform my crew of what's going on. Of course, and he presses on intercom. Sergeants, we're done here. Oh, oh please. I'm sorry, one more thing. Um, when would you want it by? Well, the sooner the better. But, um... They don't move it, I assume? Well, that's the thing. We're on a t- bit of a short time schedule. They're going to be moving that real soon. Best uh, you do that now. Otherwise, well, information can be so loose nowadays. Look, cut the bullshit, Captain, if you don't uh, excuse my brushness, but um, would it be easier to get it while they're transporting it? Do what you need to do. As long as you retrieve it and bring it back to me personally. Curious, is there a reason you can't uh, <clears throat> send your uh, squad to do it themselves? He just looks at you and says, some means are better. <laughs> All right, then. Well, I'll uh, be on my way, then. Good evening. And, uh... Sergeant comes in, picks you up, and brings you back to the ship. <sighs> well. As you head back to the ship, the door opens, and everyone's just kind of chilling and uh, waiting for you to come back with bated breath. 
And as you come back, the, all the officers leave. Well, that was uncomfortable. <laughs> Are you okay? Did, oh, did they I'm... frisk you? <laughs> no, actually. I'm surprised. I'm sure they scanned me, though, and I know they took my picture. Which means they have all the data on me now. Probably all of us, actually. Anyway, that, that aside, and they, they know very well that we did what we did. So we have a couple options open to us, I think. Gather around, everybody. I'll meet you in the recreation area. And everyone... And uh, you notice Charles, the butler, is actually up and he's done break. And he is cleaning everything. He says, oh, great, more mess. I'll get to it. And, you know, he does his thing. I just make some web in the corner while staring at him. (laughs) Don't poop in the corner. Ah, That's not poop. That is poop, poop, basically. That is spider poop, basically, is what that is. It's not spider poop. Spider poop. It's... it's... Completely different bioorganic matter. Excrement. It's excreted from the body. It's not even waste. Uh, and as uh, the, all four of you come hey, together, uh, Charles, there's a blip in both Charles and Mei Ling because Mei Ling, you're completely, you're you're tied to the the communications array as like phys- like literally tied to it because you're an android. Um, both of you get a blip and you, you notice a file uh, from the New Helios PD, and it shows you a a scan of the bunker. Um, nothing, no schematics, no nothing, but just the top view. And all it says is, this is all you get. And you notice something. Uh, this was taken in the last 24 hours, and there is signs of a battle, as it seems like another gang nearby have, is already assaulting the bunker. And you see kind of like the aftermath of like the bunker, kind of like all its defenses are up, and it seems to be built into the ground. As if like it's an underneath underground bunker deck. There's the concrete slabs kind of protecting the over um, the on top of it, but the door goes down and around. There's like a bunch of peripheral kind of sandbags that they put up there for defense, and um, it looks like a pretty nasty battle. And you kind of see um, all you see is that bunker. It seems that the bunker has about a dozen men there, but a few of them have been taken out, and a few of them seem to be injured. And uh, the the rival gang has kind of stepped back for the time being. Hey, Miles. Yes. Why did I just get a PNG file of a war zone? <laughs> well, <laughs> let me get to that. So, we're being impressed to do a job for. Uh, whoa. Yeah. That's another ship taking off. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, we're being impressed to do a job for the uh, local authorities. Uh huh. Involving retrieving a uh, data store from. By the way, there's no pay in this. That look. Oh. We know. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> oh, hold on. Alive. Hold on, because that was very suspicious. Because he, they don't want to do it themselves. He seems to want to. Keep the captain. He seems to want to keep this thing hush hush. I'm curious as to what's in this data store. Hmm. Corruption could be afoot. He also probably doesn't want to have to fight through another gang to get through them because the police couldn't make friends with him, which we maybe could. Hmm. I mean, it's an option. Never been one for making unsavory allies, but uh, if it's necessary, I'd rather them get shot than us. But it really depends on if we're after the same thing. Somehow I doubt they're after whatever data store they have, but well. So a couple a couple options as to how to get this. Uh, you get the store, um, <laughs> oh, we have. We could wait for them to move it, which they are planning on doing soon. Unfortunately, we don't know when. So we'd have to look out. Uh, from the uh, from the picture, though, it seems that the bunker's being sieged right now. It'd be very difficult to move it. It doesn't look like they could get it out anytime soon. We could also use the chaos to move in and uh, swipe it off from under their noses. There's another option, then. Uh, is available to us. Hmm. 
Hmm. Regardless, this is not something we can ignore. Did your captain give any particular sign of what might be on the data slate? No. Hmm. They're keeping that uh, hidden from me. I got the schematics and layouts of the bunker itself, or what they had. Oh, we it's an... uh, We didn't. Oh, it's just said we only got the overhead picture. Oh, well, lame. <sighs> anyway. They're basically useless. So. <laughs> Uh, I look over at Silkis and like, you're the closest thing we have to a soldier. But, do you have, a, like, a professional opinion on this? Well, I would usually either wait for an ambush or go in and try to take them out. But we also don't know how many is in there. Miles might prefer trying to talk his way through. You don't need to talk my way through a firefight. Hmm. Well, more of if there's two people fighting, have one side take you know take advantage of one side. You're not wrong. I, we we could always make allies with the the decision gang. Although yeah. I don't know, uh, I don't know how well, receptive they would be to that. But, but we, we did take out a rival gang, though. They might have interest in allying with us. I mean, the, the thought is there, but how would we even find these people? Uh, from the from the satellite imagery, you notice there is a um, there's an insignia on the sieging people. Uh, it, it is a, a large boar with the, like the the freight face of a boar with horns kind of sticking out. You can totally cross reference that image. Wait, we can Google a gang location because that's pretty. I mean, amazing. like it's like, just like it has the insignia, but like you can talk around. Yeah, get get more information about that. You know that it is a boar with tusks, kind of sticking outward. I'm sure we could go into an unsavory area and find someone with that tattoo. We could. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very well, could. You guys gotta remember, Melee is a plant doctor. Plant doctor. <laughs> Mike, what do you think about all this? I mean, we could just take that transport job and get the hell off this planet and never come back. That's an option, actually. Um, there's one uh, complication with that. So, the captain did impress upon uh, me that he would uh, let slip information of uh, who killed part of that gang. Huh? Yeah, but that was a ter- that was a terrestrial gang. That's True. part of the never come back part of the plan. I agree with you. I'm not sure how uh, how much like how, how much how many resources that gang has available to them. Uh, you know, I'm sure that they're watching our ship. And the moment we try to leave, they'll block it. Yeah, they have a bunker. The police, like a military I military mean. bunker. Oh, them? Yeah, no doubt. But I would right. like to keep uh, Alex. Should they actually do that? Huh? Alex, do they actually feasibly do that? Uh, they could try to do that, but the thing is, is um, they don't they don't have any jurisdiction around the starport because the starport is neutral. It is tied to the uh, to the government of the planet rather than the government of the city. The city is kind of its own little. Mm. Yeah. So they could try to uh, scramble fighters, but you would have a you could get off you could feasibly get off planet without any altercation. Yeah. We would be running away, though. You would be running away, though, and uh, it does take you 24 hours to get to the edge of, uh, to safely drill out of yeah. the sector. And 24 hours is a long time. I just mean it's an option. It is an it, it, totally an option. You can totally run. That's part of sandbox gaming. Oh, shit. No, wait. The monkey's name is Barnaby Jones. I got him in my inventory. You're right. Okay, Barnaby Jones is his name. I'm so glad we cleared that up. Thank God. <laughs> Out of the oh wait, his name is this. Fucking problem solved. Okay. Amazing. But yeah, no, like again, like it, there, there is. Do whatever you want, guys. It's, you're you're the crew. Yeah. So I'm I'm asking for input. What's what does everybody think about this? How do we? I mean, what was the issue? what was the time frame we were given on the bunker thing? 
I mean, he just wants it the sooner the better. I mean, I'm sure when he gets impatient, he'll tell the, the other gang what we did and point them in our direction. I'm sure if he saw us, you know, loading up cargo to leave, he would do that immediately. We're being watched. Don't, don't ever think that we're not from now on. Yeah. Oh, the troubles of tech level four planets. Truthfully, I'm more in... I would prefer just to handle this issue instead of running away. I'm in agreement. I'd rather not have it hanging over my head. That has come back to bite me on more than one occasion. Yeah. Alright, so question. what? We like... Just go to the slums and run around until we see somebody with a, a boar on their denim jacket? I need to add shit to goals. So what do you guys do? We could ask um, the captain if he knows the whereabouts of this gang. I'm sure the police have some idea where they hang out, where their turf is. Captain's, um, not, captain's not a very uh, helpful individual. There is a tag attached to this PNG file that says this is all you get, so I don't think there's going to be any more help. Well, I mean, if he wants his file back. It's titled, this is all, this is all you get, dot PNG. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, um... Would you rather just go and guns blazing? Mm, not against a fortified bunker, not particularly. And not without explosives. Do we have any of that? Okay. I, have a, I, have a, I have a grenade, but, uh, you know. Also, I don't want to spend money on this. Let's see if uh, a gang, uh, the rival gang, might have some, but uh, once again, it involves contacting them. Could we just show up at the battle site and offer our services to them? I don't know how this would work. I don't think that would go over very well. I didn't... Mm. I mean, we could just go... massaging for temples, which is purely... At the very least, we could scope it out. We should at least do that. I mean, we have some... Okay. We have, we have a spider with a scope. Yeah, so, okay, I think the, uh, I think uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go scope out the, uh... Do we need to rent another vehicle? No, where is it? Uh, you can, uh, everything is paid for in the starport by Rupert Hensworth. Nice. Oh, right. Well, let's go grab a small vehicle. Wait, maybe Dr. Hensworth has cured one of these gang members before? You can totally, you can totally ring him up. Yeah, I'm gonna send him a DM. Alright, so you send him a DM, just, uh, like, you just asking if he's, uh, free right now? Um, yeah. Oh, you're typing it down. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Um... Few, um, few moments past. Nice. Uh, you get you get a message back. It says, "Yeah, this is Rupert. I'm sorry. What, what can I do?" Uh huh. You just say it. Yeah. So I'm really will like give him a very brief outline. Like, uh, uh, cops are mad. Um, want us to break into a gang and steal some possibly illegal data slab uh, site. Um, uh, do you? Can you like give us a hook us up as like uh, a member literally of the board anything. game, or or yeah, anything. Literally anything. Anything. Um, well, are you asking for the information or just money or anything? Um, anything. Specifically, what I wanted was, uh, does he know uh, any members uh, the game? Oh, you kind of like give a does, description. Of does he have an in with them? I guess. Yeah, does he have an in? 
And, he seems um, like a guy who would like help all kinds. He would help help all kinds. And uh, you get a message from your Seems you're describing the Hellfire Hogs. Uh, I've treated a few of their members before. Trauma. Um, I don't really have an in per se because I try to stay out of those affairs. Well, at least in the past. He Keeping says, in mind that he worked on the people that we killed too. Yeah. Like he's helped those guys too. Yeah. So we see how far that goes sometimes. Hmm. And uh, he kind of there's there's like a few moments passed and um. I do have a connection, though. Uh, do you look and speak into a member of their of their gang, I guess? Could be a start. Yes. That would All be right. a pretty good start, yeah. Well, um... Here, and uh, he sends you a dossier on, on a Aaron Ritchie. Hold on, let me go ahead and copy-paste that. All I remember is that he was a shot caller. Uh, spoke a little bit when he was at the bedside. Thanked me for taking out seven gunshot wounds to his leg. Um, said, I guess, if he needed a favor, talk to him. Seemed like an alright guy, despite murdering 17 people, but that's besides the point. Uh, but. Ain't that how it goes? There's his contact information, so I guess you can let him know Dr. Hensman sent you. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, well, that's something. Um, Let me know if I can do anything that I'm else to help. Yeah, I say thank you. I, I give him back like a thank you message and close the channel. Okay. So you um, have an in. So should we go track down this Richie guy, or should we just DM him? What yeah, his contact info. We should probably uh, <laughs> let him know if we're going to send him a message first. Down, yes. Well, I'll okay. share his contact information with the rest of you. And with that, we're going to take a 10 minute break. Okay. All right. Trying something new with this whole pen and paper stuff uh, with the sandbox, giving you guys a whole bunch of different things. I like it. But I want to do them yeah. all. Well, I mean, you could do them all, but the thing is, is that it's a sandbox PNP. It's how it works, it's how the world works. You have people with jobs. But anyways. I'll be right back. Boy, I wish people could just throw jobs at us all the time in real life. <laughs> <laughs> you guys aren't armed with a ship. No. <laughs> Just remember, like, having a ship is like having an uh, entire company to yourself. Yeah, actually, see, if you already have a lot of money and resources, you do, in fact, get a lot of offers to use those money and resources. <laughs> oh, man, this is a fucking allegory on real life, isn't this? Oh, my oh, God. God. It's barely <laughs> allegorical. It's just literal. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Okay, I guess I'm gonna be AFK for a little bit. Okay, I'm back. Okay. Then we're just waiting for everyone else to get back. Welcome back. I'm Alex. Come here. Come here. Should go for about another hour. We did start a little bit late because we had to deal with all that character gen stuff at the start. Yeah. But I think we all gotten used to this system at this point. 
Hello, Just waiting for mailing and rook. Cool. Do. Mooney's back. All right, Mooney's back. Just gonna wait for rook. Wow. 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 Mooney's back. Wow. Hey, Alex, did you see the thing that I posted in the uh, raid chat? No. Go look at the last thing. Go look at the thing I tagged Angie with. Oh God. <laughs> okay, I have returned. Welcome back. Hello. Note how I say that instead of saying that I'm back. Hi, I'm back, back, I'm back. back. Clever. That fucking real. What the hell, Ken? Did you see what I wrote under? Yes! <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, it should be about another hour. We get to go for another hour? Yep. Hell yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay, and with that, we rejoin our adventurers, or not adventurers, our crew. What do you guys do? Um, well, I guess we should contact them and tell them that uh, we could help each other out. Y'all want me to do that? Yes, please. You are miles. I mean, I don't have anything in talk, so... It'd be better somewhere else. Actually, what are my actual rankings in talk? <laughs> That's a good question. No, you should do it. Of course. <laughs> Did you ring him up? Oh, can we voice chat? That'd be neat. No, don't. Ring him up, or do you text him? That's up to you. Uh... You know... Let me text him. Uh, a phone call may be a little, like... Just, just tell him that the doctor the doctor gave us his number and said he could help us out. Okay, so you go ahead and text him. And maybe we can help him out. Mm-hmm. While we're at it. You scratch my back, I scratch your back. Yeah, yeah, open up with that kind of idea. Good old texting a dude. <laughs> I love mailing's kind of like soliloquy there. Stares on the viewport. I just wanted to learn about plants. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna die in a crime bunker. Mm -hmm. Marlene does not consider herself an adventurer. Did you take it in the knee? Hey. Old joke? No. Hey. No. Gross. Alright, so about 30, mi 30 long minutes pass. And eventually, you get a message. In, in all lowercase, in using like numbers and stuff, it's like really terrible text etiquette. And it says, Huh, so she at the doctors? Well, I guess I still own them one. If it's beneficial to me, well, I guess, uh, what do you have? You want to meet? I'll just take the where. And, uh, uh neutral area. Nice lighting. Make sure you don't backstab me, he says. And he says like four like smiley face emojis after that fact. God. Does his text does his text include the smug heh at the beginning of each sentence? Oh please. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Or the leak, he says. He gives you an address. Convenient. 
Hey, while we're there, uh, we should maybe talk uh, talk to the guy about arranging that shipment. Yeah, you can totally uh, do that. Letting him know at least how long we gotta wait. <laughs> give, probably give him a week or something. Yep. We we'll see if we can't. We can we'll, we'll split see. the party. That's what I'm saying. All right. So I'll handle uh, the guy I just talked to. I mean, he may want me to come alone, so you guys can handle like the rest. I would prefer not to better. leave you alone. Miles can handle himself. Oh, you'll be in the. We're really one of the same place. We're, we're in the same gonna, area, by the way. We're yeah. just gonna like. We're just gonna go in separately. Don't worry. So isn't, isn't keeping an eye on people from a distance your specialty anyway? But how great of a distance we're talking about? Like across a room. bar. Oh, so we're going. We're both going to the same bar. Yeah, it's everyone's going to the same, same bar. bar. Yeah, that same works bar. then. So everyone kind of gears up, I assume, with all your stuff, and you head down to yes. the oil leak. Uh, one second. You head over to oil leak. Um, first. After taking the uh, the uh, the van, specifically a van this time, Kent. Okay, uh, it's a van. That's cool. Uh, a van. Plenty of room for Silkus in the back. Yep. Uh, a van to head down to the oil leak, and uh, you go to the, one of the more unsavory parts of town. You notice there is a very clear line of policemen, kind of just patrolling there. Um, obviously, making sure no one goes past them. Uh, you head to a police checkpoint, and they let you through. And you find yourself at the oily leak next to the blue collar district. You notice nearby there are a lot of mines, there are a lot of uh, homes. This is close to the edge of the city, but it's outskirts where the slums are. You can sort of see the, the, the smoke from the distance from trash can fires and so on and so forth. Ah, uh, yeah, this is the uh, nicest shithole in town. The, the nicer shithole in town. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Uh, the sound of uh, men jeering and hollering as all of these people coming just a long day's work at the mines or the metalworks or whatever uh, factory job that they have on this godforsaken planet. Uh, first, a wave of laughter, then a wave of booze washes over everyone, and your sensor, your audio sensor, your not, not your audio, your um, sense of smell or your smell sensors. Arl. Yes, uh, May Lane just go crazy with the stench of body odor, metal, rust, and beer as it fills and overloads your, your minds. I assume Mike is used to this, and so is Miles. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, Miles is not used to this. And I'd so be used to it. It smells like the barracks. It's ah, true, yeah. It behold, like the, the product of a progress, quotes. Let's <laughs> play. <laughs> and as you head to the oily leak, you notice that there is a uh, the, the sign again in the stereotypical pink neon. With at the end, there's an image of a a, a barrel, uh, and underneath is uh, pink drops of representing oil, kind of flashing as it's dropping. They kind of actually legit. Um, also, there is a leak of condensation from the from the gutters dripping down there too. It's kind of very mm. interesting sight. As you step up, a very large man, about six six four, standing uh, by the entrance, looks at you, sees Mei Ling, and Mei Ling, you're usually very well kept, right? Like, yeah, very, I would have dressed down for this occasion, but okay. I still don't yeah, have well, like I'm any like clothes that would and... fit in. So yeah, I definitely don't look like I have a lot here. All right, and uh, the, the man looks at you and says, "Y'all are clean." Just, that's all he says. He just looks down. This big hulking man, you know, six foot four, leathery skin, bald head, uh, wearing a tank top and bulging muscles. And next to him is a uh, is a very obvious shotgun placed to the side of the building. And Lance says, yes? I, I just kind of put my hand on Mailing's shoulder and kind of pull her onward. Like, if he's not stopping us at the door, that also means we're probably good. Yeah, he's, he's not stopping you at the door. He just, he's not. Yeah, I'm uh, just... Don't. <sighs> we don't want no trouble. Don't make, don't cause any trouble. I'm gonna, uh... Oh, yeah, my guns are stowed, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys kind of enter, and, uh... Yeah. He just lays there, and you... you know... I, hey, I do, uh, I do acknowledge, like, the, the bouncer, whenever he says that, I kind of give him, like, a... 
like raise one. I don't look back at him, just raise one hand, like yeah, shake yeah, it, like yeah, 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 no problem. And all of you kind of enter uh, this building again. Another wave of booze washes as it seems to be just a regular, uh, regular pub uh, with um, metal tables and the scent of rust really heavily hangs in the air. Uh, this metallic scent mixed with with alcohol. And, you, and there's uh, about 15 patrons here. Most of them seem to be blue collar workings. Uh, blue collar workers kind of blown off steam after a long hard day. Um, you notice a man with a denim jacket because he said so earlier. With a denim jacket with a on, on his left shoulder you see a patch of a hog with tusks uh, pointed outward. Is sitting there. He's on his uh his compad doing whatever. And on the other side, you notice the man who had met you earlier, uh, who had offered you the job, laughing and drinking with some of his mates as well. What do you guys do? Is the hog guy alone, or is he with a bunch of people? Uh, the hog guy is currently alone right now. All right, well, I'll, well, All right. I'll saddle up to that guy. But uh, you can deal with him first, since it sounds like they got more to do. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna move on up to that group and. Uh... I can holler at him whenever we come up. I wish Miles luck as we walk by. Okay. And uh, with that, hey. the three of you kind of head over to where uh, where the man was. And he says, oh, oh, you're here. All right. Excuse me, guys. Got to gotta do business and all. They're like, yeah, yeah, Jones, do your shit. And they'll laugh at him. And they, they go back to drinking their beer. Uh, and um, Mr. Jones, as you notice, his name is Jones, and on his chest, you notice again, Jones Metalworks, as the, the what he was wearing earlier. Uh, he's in he's in uh, less clothing this time. Instead of like the the jacket and all like the minor gear, he's just in a in a black tank top and some jeans. And he says, "Huh, like uh, we can head over here, reserve the spot." Hey, um, hey, nasty granny, we're gonna take this over here. And uh, you notice behind the counter, well, old lady uh, wearing plaid That's and. Her name. Nasty granny? Yes. Uh, cleaning <laughs> cleaning some glasses and goes, yeah, yeah, Joe's, do whatever you need to do. I'll keep it on your tab. And Joe says, thanks, granny. And uh, all. Get out over there, you youngin. <laughs> Raylene feels like that's not a very polite thing to say to your grandmother, but she doesn't <laughs> say anything. No, that's punk as hell. I love it. And uh, she's been called Nasty Granny for the past 60 years. She has been called Nasty Granny for a very long time. And, um, oh my god. Since she was a younger. <laughs> as all of you kind of head over to um, the, the side, and the, the music kind of dims, which actually is pretty playing tasteful jazz. Actually, the song in the background right now. Uh, uh, and all the workers just kind of drinking their days away. And then he says, So, uh, you guys accepted my job offer? I, well, I'm going to be honest, it sounds like pretty good work. Uh, we ran into a couple of problems. Oh, it's too bad. It's, uh, well, I mean, sorry to hear that, he says. So, uh, my, first of all, my first question is, uh, like, what's your delivery deadline? Well, we have uh, the stuff done. They know they have the stuff. We have the stuff done. Um, I guess uh, two weeks time at most. Uh, Alex, how long does it take to travel from sector to sector? Uh, six days. Uh, for per just uh, from, so uh, what I mean is how long does it take for like one sector? Uh, six days. Actually, he would say about a, a month. Then, sorry, I didn't do the math properly in my head. Yeah, that's sick. It's like woof. That's that's like a week per per hex. You say? Huh? It's uh two five one, six. One two three. One two three. Oh. Five yeah, five eight, is uh something else. Eighteen days. It's right. Eighteen days. Yep. Okay, so no, that's actually pretty manageable. Um, we got to wrap up some of our business here. Uh, but like, I would say in about a week, we'll be ready to ship up and and get out. No problem. Oh, uh, excellent. Um, I guess you guys take the job then. Uh, one little problem. Um, well, hopefully it's not a big problem. Seems to be problems on your crew. Well, I need to know more about these folks that trashed your ship, because this is like, I'm treating this as a danger to our crew, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, we'll talk. 
Uh, and uh, charisma. Yeah, roll tall charisma. I'll get you. I'll give you a plus one because uh, you, you you know how to talk to these guys. Very much in your yeah. background. Yeah, these are my my kind of people. Mm -hmm. That's a six. Oh man, you Oof. rolled. Oh, you know, well, I mean, that's a five, but unfortunately, he's not going to give you too much information. But he's still very sympathetic. Look, I uh, don't want to cause trouble in words and rumoring, rummaging, <laughs> rummages about. But um, look, just a couple of people who are uh, not really gangs, but I guess you can say people on the side of the Nova Commonwealth. Um, they're backed I mean, by the Nova Commonwealth. If you... If you could told if he had told me they were gangs, that would have been better. If they're backed by the Nova Commonwealth, that means we might be seeing them off planet. Likely, but uh, I heard something. Um, uh, there's been some chaos in their ranks. Heard on the news. Uh, part of their leadership's <laughs> been wiped out. I mean, it's good for us, but they trashed my ship way before that. Hopefully, this new new stuff gets me gets them off my back. You hear, you know, you know what I'm saying. Okay, and I'm guessing with that roll like that, I'm not gonna be able to haggle up at all. Huh? No, or is that a I mean that, that yeah. was a that, that talk was specifically to see if he wanted to give any information, specific information. That's all yeah. he gives. That's all he gives you. All right, and uh, so basically, yeah, I'm gonna try to haggle him up. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell him I want 5K, mm -hmm. but I want to haggle him. I actually want to haggle him up to at least 4K. Okay. Maybe maybe higher if he seems like he'd give. Uh, yep, yeah, absolutely. And so what, so what, uh, what exactly what do you say mean? to him? What exactly do you say to him? I mean, like, and well, that's all right. So this is this is a serious threat here. Um, I, I, I can't accept just standard shipping fees for this. No, right, I hear you. I mean, now roll talk. I said this back of the yep. yeah, same back of the cargo bay, but we need. But this time you don't you don't get, you don't roll with the plus one because the earlier was more information. This time it's money that you're dealing with. Yeah. Only, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh no! Oh no. my god! Oh no! Uh, no. Yeah, it looks at you. His, his money's too tight. He, yeah, he can't. Yeah, no. He, he pretty much says, "Look, all this money that that thirty five hundred was good. That's supposed to go straight to my boys, man." Um, I was supposed to do the shipment myself. That was going to come out of oh. my, my my money. Uh, this here is um, a large chunk of the money that they had paid us. Uh, I can't. Sorry, skimming too close, man. All right. That, no, that's fair. I, I I I can't ask for something you ain't got. Um, just give us a week. It might be a couple of days more if bullshit happens, but. Uh, right. Yeah, we can make that. We can make that in a month, no problem. All right, that's a little off my back. Just contact me, and I'll have the stuff uh, uh, shipped over to where yeah, you no guys problem. are. No problem. No problem. Right. Shake his hand. So, meanwhile, this conversation was happening. We pan the camera over to Miles talking with uh, this gentleman, uh, Mr. Richie. You sit down in front of him, and he looks up and says, "You're all the dressed, Mr. Richie, I presume." You speak weird. Quiet. My name is Mr. Sinclair. Okay. And I believe your uh, associates are currently uh, in a bit of a jam. Uh, okay, real quick, can you roll a uh, roll talk, please? Yeah, yes, I sure can. You roll a roll talk charisma, please. Oh wow! Uh, how much? That would be about who? All of his buddies? Oh! Uh, he was—he was using it with like three other people. Three, yeah, three with him. With him, would be twenty credits. Yikes! Yeah, but like, like, like a round. Stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, like it's also like, like a round is just like a, a beer. Oh uh, well, if that's the case, that's what a round is. Yeah, so that's what a round five is. Credits. Five credits then. Okay, that okay, okay. About to say five credits. No problem. I'm going to do that. Uh, and with that, this is... He, uh, at first, um, he, he gets caught by surprise. Like, oh, how the fuck you know that shit? But he's not very aggressive. He's like, keep your voice down. No one's supposed to know about that. <laughs> the city has eyes. Anyway, um, we actually uh, had a run-in with uh, <laughs> that group you've got a uh, grudge against. Uh, oh, that wait. Stone face. Yo, was you guys? Well, let's just say 
Uh, part of the leadership is not going to be reporting back to that bunker anytime soon. The man who's wearing this denim jacket and uh, he has very shaggy hair that hasn't been cleaned in weeks. Um, teeth that have seen better days. And, uh, it looks like he's on some stuff. Well, not right now, but he looks like he's been on some stuff. Here he goes, yo, um, listen, I'm a huge fan of, of guns and uh, we heard the bodies. Uh, that's some really crazy wounds in them. Um, you, you don't by happen to chance know the person that shot them all, right? I'd like to get their autograph. Oh, well, um, person is, uh, <laughs> uh, subjective, but, um, tell you what, I can introduce you if you, uh, help us out. Oh, well, yo, this is the best day of my life, man. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, so first off, um, no one's supposed to know about that. See, uh, I'm a shot caller of the Hellfire Hogs, and if you mention that in public again, I'll gut you, okay? And kind of gives you a toothy, well, toothless grin. <laughs> I understand. What does he mean by shot caller? I feel lost uh, with that term. Oh, um, think of it like, uh, like in, in a gang, there is your foot, uh, your foot soldiers, like your regular gang members. Shot callers are like your your sergeants. Like, they, oh, okay, okay. So just like upper, like lowest, lowest level of actual. They're middle like, management of authority. authority. They're middle management. Okay, middle management. Okay. I like to speak to your manager. <laughs> All right, so they're they're middle management of a gang. So, um, anyways. Got it. Is, um, I can, trust, um, me, trust me, the less people that know about what's going on, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's yo, just um, to get rid of. Yo, uh, you got, you, um, you, you, um, you stay with us for a little bit. You, you, you got that, you got that person with you? Could, could, could use their skills. You, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? They're in the bar, and their skills might be available. Oh, <laughs> God, they're in the bar. Hmm. And, and he, like, tightens up his, like, clothing and, and uh, he kind of makes him, and is freezing himself up for a little bit as best he can, this, this gentleman over here. Now, my friend, I wouldn't get too, uh, too jumpy there. She, she may, uh, <laughs> Mistake you for uh, making threatening moves at me. Oh, 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 right, right, right. And he does a sniff and says, excuse me. And uh, he, he takes out a small little vial and there's a needle in the vial and there's this yellow liquid in uh, this vial. And he says, excuse me. And he kind of puts his arm under the table and you hear like something injecting. And you just go, oh, all right, I'm calm. I'm chill, I'm chill. Relaxes a little bit. Uh, Very good, Lord. Well, I'll get straight to the point. I need that bunker busted, and I need something inside out of it. Everything uh, else is yours. Everyone dies. Oh, well, if that's the case, I'll introduce you to my boss. Yes, quiet. Can you bring him here, or is there another place we need to meet? Oh, no, he's at the bunker. Oh, man, we can't be talking about that. You notice, like, his eyes, um, his eyes start to, the whites of his eyes start to turn purple. And uh, he seems to be a lot more relaxed right now. Is that a drug? It, I'm out of character. Yeah. Okay. Well, medicine. He could probably just know yeah, what that right. drug is. He is a doctor, after all. Uh, well, you just saw yellow liquid in a vial. You don't know exactly what it is. Well, I mean, how many different things turn your fucking eyes purple? Yeah, <laughs> fair that, point. That, that is actually fair point. Good. I mean, that's a point. symptom. That's, that's a symptom that he can fair, potentially, even if it's a fair, heart check, he should be able to. Uh... Fair point. Go ahead and roll a no if you want to know the type of drug it is. <laughs> I mean, if there's a lot of things that turn your eyes, I mean, it's the future, right? It's it, true. Be. It's true. Sure, is that a, is that a no or a heal? I'm confused. Uh, healing maybe is, a no with a bonus for having heal. It's 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 no at intelligence and the threshold's lower because you have an idea of what it is. Okay, there we go. Okay, That's I'll do that. Thing. I like all the different little difficulty tweakies you can do. Yeah, That's neat. Mm-hmm. The tweakies. Ooh. Right. The threshold was six, so uh Oh, oh. well, okay. That's okay. I don't and, even know uh, what it is. And you, you know what it is, you know the name of it, it's called Inspiration. Um, you don't really know? Hey, that sounds familiar. Ha, ah, throwback, throwback. Um, it's Inspiration. Uh, you know that it is a relaxing type of drug that makes people have very vivid hallucinations. Uh, kind of makes a night much more relaxed, like as if everything has gone through slow-mo. Uh, anyway, you said he's at the location. Yeah, he's at the location, man. No rush, no rush. So, what's this favor the doctor needed? 
This is what you're talking about? The documents this gang taken care of, they uh, did a little more than threaten. Alright. Alright. Tell you what, when you meet the boss, just tell him you work for me, okay? And he kind of takes his hand and taps his chest as if he's gesturing like, you guys work for me. Make it a little bit easier. You make me look good. You guys do what you need, and then I look good, and I become a better shot caller, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sounds like a plan. All right, excellent. Oh, yeah. Oh, but anyways, you, get, you introduced me to that person that did all those shots. Are you going to be at the bunker? Oh, yeah, I'm going with you guys. I'll be driving, too. He just what? smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, meet us. Uh, what vehicle are you in? Oh yeah, I'm uh, I'm, I'm in the truck out back. You can't miss it. Very good. We'll meet you outside in just a moment. Let me oh, uh, gather my associates right. and uh, we'll, okay. we'll see you out there. And uh, he stands up and he nearly trips over the table that you guys were sitting in the booth. Walks over. This is good night, Nasty Granny. And Nasty Granny says, "Good night, Richie." Love it. Anyways, he leaves. I'll, re- I'll return to the lads. God damn it. I probably didn't hear any of that, though. No, you did not. I do not know what's about to happen. All right, so I'll sit down at the... Uh... Oh, well, I'm very going. What happened? I think, uh, Mike's, uh... Nothing happened. Okay, Mike never mind. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Nothing happened. I don't know what you're fucking talking about. Okay, let's keep going, guys. All right, I'll sit back to I'll give, go back to the table where uh, everyone the the rest of the group is at. And uh, right now the um the the dude is uh, sorry um Jones is still with you the guy who's giving you the other job. Mm-hmm. He thanks you for the rounds and says yeah, no you're uh, you're a pretty good guy. And so anyways, it looks like you guys need to talk business. So I'll be over there with my mates. He kind of stands up, he takes the beer, and heads over there. Yeah, give him a wave. Uh, well, how'd that go? All right, uh, deadlines. 30 days, it's only going to take us 18 to get over there. And the money? Uh, they don't have any more money. Hmm. Is it worth taking the job, then? Yeah, I mean, it's still pretty safe work. Uh, the swallow's pretty fast. I don't expect to have too much trouble. We'll just load it up the day we head out. <laughs> Hell, we even still got time to do uh, Mei Ling's job if this goes over quick. This should go over now, actually. Um, so it oh. looks like we're the end worked, and we can speak to the boss of this gang who's at the bunker. Uh, that's convenient. Well then, let's get this started. The quicker we get this over with, the Hold on. A thought has occurred to me. Uh-huh. Once we get this data, sl- data slab, um, I don't know if these... Uh, Let's just say I don't really trust the authorities not to sweep in there and uh, tie up loose ends. Oh, we need a contingency. <laughs> I need you to be prepared for that. Oh. Hey, Mayling, go ahead and take the job. Go ahead and make sure you, you absolutely take the job. All right. Uh, I'll... Just let them know that we need a couple of days. I will send it. Well, I mean, we're not expected for like three days. So yeah, that's great. I mean, but just let them know that we are one hundred percent on board. Right, and I will they, send them... We are now technically employed by them. That you, you see what I'm getting at here. No, yep. but okay. Um, I'll text them and let them know that we we're taking the job. Uh, almost as if it was instant. He had a message. Excellent. We will send you the information later. We look forward to working with you. Thank you for your services. And probably send a message to the doctor, just letting him know that we might have to call on him exactly one more time if the police want to cause us problems. I don't know if that'll actually help us, but I mean, it's another route. Hold again if you want. It just depends on how this goes down. <laughs> I mean, you want me to you want me to help us cover our ass? This is this is something yeah, you guys I are... to do. Let's cover our ass. Yeah, this is fine. All right, I will text the doctor and let him. Sh- should I let him know exactly what we're doing, or that we might just later? Uh, you know what? 
How secure is his? This is like over a public channel. This yeah. is a this is a pretty public channel right now. Yeah, don't don't see, give him too much. See, see the thing is, is that if you guys message to each other in your group chat, you have the safety of your your com mm -hmm. communications array. If you're messaging the doctor, that is over free waves. All right, I'll yeah, just no. let him know. Uh, just, that, just say thanks. Say thanks. thanks. Let him know that, that he helped yeah, himself. Yeah, say thanks. We met up with the guy, uh, and we might need to talk to him later. Uh, and you got a message back. Look, you guys did me a real solid. Um, anything I can do to help, just let me know. Uh, all right, I mean, that's the setup as we're going to get, right? We already have all our gear. Yes, I packed everything I needed. I mean, I'm still full on ammo since we uh, stocked up at the last at baseboard. I never even had to fire my gun. Uh, I charged my cells, so we should be good to go. And as you kind of do that, and uh, you guys kind of leave, and uh, nasty I bring grinning. my carbine with me. Nope, that's too bad. And um, hey, um, I'm gonna leave a, a total of three credits yeah. for uh, my drink and tip. Yeah, that's for nasty granny. Oh, no. and <laughs> <laughs> so, Nasty Granny, uh, wearing that plaid with uh, the white hair wrapped up into a nice bun, looks, yes, have a good night, and uh, waves you off as she continues to clean her glasses. Uh, you are back into the night air. One second, let's do this. So as the four of you head back to uh, behind the tavern, or not the tavern, wow, it's d, d talk, behind the bar, um, you notice the most gaudy truck you have ever seen in your life. It is a monster truck repurposed with the grill with tusks on it, uh, with the hot rod, hot wheels colors on the side, um, just bright as a solar flare, and all these neon colors blinking everywhere. And there's four exhaust pipes and uh, just, yeah, no, it's it's pretty pretty assaulting to the eyes. I can tell you that. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's insulting to all eight of my eyes. <laughs> Mike's just like got a big old grin on his face. And it's revving up, and you say, "Hey!" And you see a man, Richie, as you saw earlier. Hop on in! And you notice he gestures to the uh, the back, where the um, all of you will be sitting in the truck's. Uh, what is it? What's it called, Ken? At the rear. The truck bed. So it's, it's, it's this is like a a, a big truck, truck a that's like truck a two seater or, truck, like a pickup truck. Yep. But yeah, it's massive. So yeah, it's yeah, it's like a it's like a big ass monster truck with like a, a truck bed in the back. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be a bed. Yeah. It's a truck bed back there. It's um, just as you to go back, and he is high as fuck right now. Is there anyone else sitting with him up front? Nope. It's just him. Shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I uh, I can't stand the stench. Elaine is looking very confused and horrified. <laughs> I just get it. Maylene could probably fit up. Maylene could probably fit up front if you don't feel like you could hang on in the back of a bed. Mm. There's there's probably enough room for you to sit in between us. She looks at the <laughs> bench and she likes. The as driver. long as you don't mind him reaching over you to to shift the gears. Oh, he is totally gonna do that. And uh, well, no, you have to because the gears are gonna be between your like they're gonna be right in front of you. That's where they are. I'll sit in the back. Okay. <laughs> okay. So with that, the uh, three of you sit in the back with with uh, with Mike Hernandez uh, sitting in the shotgun, and hey, how you doing? And he pops like a uh, 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 can of beer and quaffs it in one go. Y'all ready for this? No oh, good. Alcohol. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Probably. And uh, I drink. And is hey, when he jumps in, I, I'm gonna ask him, like, boss, you sure you don't want me to drive? And he looks and he, he slaps his hand onto the uh, the sheer gift, uh, the, the sheer gift, what is it called? Like the gear shift, gear shift, the sheer gift. Oh my gosh, a sheer gift is what you give when the budget is tight. <laughs> yeah, the gear shifts, and uh, the gear shift on top of it has a flaming skull of a hog, hog on it. Puts his hand, it looks really uncomfortable to use. And he looks at you, this here Betsy is my truck. Only I drive it. I can respect that. I buckle up. <laughs> just just hold the wheel when he gets, when he swears. Uh, hey, hey, uh, hey, Mike, there's no seat buckle. I'm gonna go sit with Silkus and like 
Usually I'm people don't bother to take it out. I mean, it probably got shot out or broke or something. All right, then I'm gonna kick my legs up uh, it, against the the front of it the. It is probably like, the most uncomfortable drive you all area. have been on, as it revs up the engine and it's just this exhaust goes out. And as he turns the, and it turns to shift the drive, the grill of the truck lights on fire as if it's blowing up flames. And you just nice. hear this woo, and uh, he drives. Um, it's pretty bad. There absolutely are handrails, I guess. So well, yeah, right. it's pretty bad. Uh, mailing, if you could hand, hand hold things. If yeah. mailing, if you could barf, you totally would right now. I would absolutely be barfing. I'm doing the robot equivalent of barfing. Don't you have like an ability to shut down your sensory? Like that seems like a good thing that would. I'm too afraid I'll fall Android. off if I do that. Oh. I and, mean, I could just keep you tied to the or clinging to the you know the silk. You know, can't you just like web us a seatbelt or something? Yeah, yeah. Silk has totally does that. Would you so, want me to do that? Yes, please. Yes, uh, very much. I'm sorry. gonna I'm turn my processors off. And see you guys later. Yeah, you, oh, what you, Mooney, sorry, you need to be man. very, very careful whenever you put this part into a comic. <laughs> please be very careful about yeah. this part. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, Silkis, um, in a very non-sexual way. <laughs> <laughs> in a very, I mean, just, I want it to be clear, like, we all do agree. Yes, make some webbing for May to attach to, so that she can, uh, turn off some of her sensors. Yeah, I just, like, tie it around my waist. It's the least yeah. thing you can tie so, it. Yeah, it basically, well, basically you just make ropes, then. Like, you just make ropes and, like, tie, tie it to whatever. There's, like, handrails and shit. I imagine back there, or at the very least, like truck beds have hitches and stuff that you can just yeah. tie yourself up in. There's, there's like all kinds of holes and stuff in the frame of them that you can just get ropes through. Yep. And with that, the part of the crew goes on probably the worst uh, bumpy road adventure any of you have been on. Save for Mike, you're probably used to this. You don't mind this too much. He actually. It's, no, I'm, I, I, I'm a. Yeah, I've done this before. It's like, uh, imagine it's, it's a really. It's like you're on a wooden roller coaster without rails right now, and your hands are in the air, and it's breaking by the seams. It's really, really shaky. And uh, from the the constant thrum of the revved up engine, and he screams through the night air as this fire, this, uh, this disgustingly gaudy truck drives out. And about uh, six hours later... Uh, six hours? Yeah, it's pretty far. Pretty uh. far out. <laughs> it's a bunker. They don't build bunkers in the middle of the city. I'm glad we took a nap. Well, they do, but like bunkers in the middle of the city wouldn't be able to be taken over by a gang. So about sit a long drive, the longest drive you've ever been on mailing. I mean, no, I'm not on it. I'm off and I'm off. Yep. And, I'm uh, not on. She's thank out editing Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. The, thank you for Silkus's uh, very lovely. Uh, silk non-sexual webbing, it does provide a little bit of cushion. And it's nice, it's pleasant. And, uh, Miles, can you even take a nap in these conditions? I mean, yeah, because, well, like, I can at least stay stable. Yeah, you, you, you're, you're all harnessed in pretty well. Alright, is Bartholomew okay? The monkey? Barnaby Jones? Yeah, he's, Barnaby fine. Jones? He's, he's in my backpack. He'll be alright. Yeah. He's been on worse rides. He probably likes it. You just hear in the background the yeah, I kinda like the the huge ride we went on with Mike. Alright, like he would probably get around and just run around the truck bed when he got bored. It is six hours, so So six a long a very long Yeah, I don't want him to poop in my backpack. Yeah, he he said oh no, oh no, he had to lean over the edge. Oh. Yeah. And also on um he used to set it to take a shortcut through a desert. So you're off road right now, so it's divorce. No, that's really smooth at least. Depends on yep. how we're at the game. Sure, the sand it gets depends everywhere. Depends on what his tires are. Oh, his tires. Big ass um, monster truck tires. Big ass monster truck tires, but they um you notice something though. Uh, these tires are kind of made out of the synthetic material, and he presses a button on the on the dash, and spikes come out of the tires, make, giving him a lot more traction in the sand. Right. Oh, that's fucking cool. Uh. 
Eventually, he sobers up, and he keeps driving, makes some small talk. So... Yeah, yeah, I want to make some small talk with him. Yeah, Hell yeah, that's exactly what I was about to say. Yeah, so he makes some small talk with him and says, So, uh, what are y'all doing out here for? Seems, uh, mighty convenient that y'all show up when this happens. I mean... What's your stake I in give this? him, like... I, I just say, like, you know, I'm an old, uh... Just from bullshit, like, some kids from some bullshit backwater planet. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, uh, out here trying to make some money. What we were doing was uh delivering uh, you know the doc right well yeah hell yeah of course that's how we met you yeah so. i uh one yeah. time on this nasty firefight in new helios took uh, seven shots right yeah seven shots from uh from a carbine though thankfully it jammed so otherwise that eighth shot probably would have killed me but thankfully <laughs> the caliber was small enough that the doc so me up i own my life a lot of people own this life so Normally, under normal circumstances, if you had called upon me like that, you'd all be hanging from chains right now. But you know, just how life works. And, but um, yeah. I shrug. I owe him. So after this, we're square. At least I hope so. As long as none of you stab him in the back or stab the boss behind the back. Hey, hey, boss. No, like, I I do give him the full detail though. Like, you know, we we just wanted to get move some shit for the doctor, right? Just some medical supplies, actually above the board. Like, no bullshit. Those other guys uh, hassled us because uh, they didn't like who the doctor... I, didn't, I don't name him, I just say they didn't like who the doctor was uh, working on. Um, and that got us into a fight. They ended up dead. And now the cops are pissed off at us, and they just want the data slate. So, I mean, they don't even give a shit about any of this, so we want the data slate. Everything else is whatever you guys want. He kind of looks at you nice and, uh, can you roll, um, talk, please? Why did you mention the cops? Because that's kind of actually something that you need to do with folks like this. Because you need to meet, be sure that, no, you and I, fuck the cops, but you and I are cool. Yeah, roll talk. But that's the only thing that we want. You're not wrong, but... They don't know any, and I, and I do make that clear, they don't know anything about what we're doing. Like, or, they didn't... Oh, don't worry, I'm not there. I'm not, I don't even know you're having this conversation. Yeah, roll, roll yeah I know. I'm just telling Alex that, like, yeah, that's this is, these are things yeah, that I've been making. I know, I know what you're trying point. to do. That's perfectly valid. Uh, so, talk. Uh, what stat? Uh, charisma. And. No modifiers. Bonus. No modifiers. All right. And uh, he kind of. Without kind of batting an eye, keeping his eyes on the road, he says, and cops are involved in this, huh? I spit. Well, at least you're honest about that. You do realize I'm gonna have to tell my boss, right? I think you boys want to know if the cops, like, have an interest in your place anyway, right? Very true. You see... You're saying, you know, whatever's in that, whatever in that slate's fucking important. Now, all I want to do is pass it over to him so I get the fuck off this planet without getting shot down. Mm-hmm. I hear you. That's fair. The demeanor kind of changes a little bit and says, uh, so you're looking for them, or this is just some shit you need to do? We ain't even getting paid for this shit, dude. This is literally, you know, you know, like a bullet, like, a, we got a gun to our head here. Well, I've been in that position before, and I owe the doctor. I'll get you to my boss, see if we can get you something. Work out a deal. Yeah. If anything, I'm selling out the cops here. <laughs> Fair point. All right. And he continues driving about a few hours later. Eventually, you come across uh, an even gaudier encampment of a bunch of tents. And in the center of this tent is a very large construct of metal, scrap metal, uh, welded together to look like a boar. As it is standing in the middle, it's about 10, uh, 20 foot high really massive like the hog's head is the size of a monster truck in itself and it's constantly spewing out flame and in the distance you can see sort of an entrance of a metal kind of bunker there's about 20 men in this camp right now all of them seem to be going out their day and they're all wearing their denim jackets and jeans with the hogs Slapped on their left shoulder, and uh, um, <clears throat> Richie kind of parks his car and it kind of thrums down. Well, we're here. 
Follow me to go to the boss. And, all uh, right, Mr. Richie. And all of you kind of wake up, and uh, you power back on Mei Ling. The four of you, all kind of dressed by sands and dust for after six hours driving in wild lands, in the bad lands, rather. And you head over to the boss's tent. And by the boss's tent, you notice that the entire tent is made of boar hide. They really love their aesthetic. Wow. I mean, that's dedication, and you have to respect it. Mm -hmm. Or they probably will shoot you. And as you enter, uh, you see a man, about six foot five, big hulking man, uh, tan skin, uh, actually pretty decent hair, uh, not, not styled or anything, but nice decent hair, kind of goes down to his shoulders. And on the back, you just see the boss written in oh, big gosh. red letters. And you notice though, his uh, vest, the arms on the vest are ripped off and he's not wearing any clothing underneath, except for his pants, of course, but tattooed, uh, you, you see that in the mark tattoo. And uh, he turns around and he takes off a pair of glasses as he was reading a book. Aww. Oh, thank gosh. And he says... Well, now Mooney wants to kiss him. I hope you're happy. No, I don't want to kiss him. I just think he's cute. <clears throat> I'm going to kiss him. It's going gonna, it's gonna to progress <laughs> that way. And, uh... God, I love space. <laughs> and anyways, <laughs> um, he, he puts down his book, and uh, you kind of see the uh, the markings of... What is that one name of the book? Of uh, the whale? Uh, Mo- Moby, Dick. Moby Dick? Moby Dick. Yeah, he puts down Moby Dick. And wow, he's Oh. No, it's not a data pad, but it's an actual book. Open Dick is a dense read. I'm surprised. Would Silkus have actually seen a book before? Uh, you've heard, you've seen an image, but you've never see, probably seen one in the flesh. I mean, we got the one book. And he, he takes the book and he puts it in what appears to be this vault made out of intricate things and it closes. And uh, the boss. Uh, Turns over, he takes off his glasses and says, Oh, welcome back, Richie. We can um, uh, have them sit over there. Are you okay? <laughs> some, 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 someone has squeaked. <laughs> Go on. So, um, uh, so Richie, um, uh, you, these guys are uh, good folk? And uh, Richie, sorry, I, I realize I'm talking to myself. Uh, and Richie mm-hmm. says, yeah, they're good folk. We'll catch you up on some details later, but I'll let you all do the talking. And, and Richie kind of leaves the room. And uh, the boss before you says, hello, my name's Willie. You can call me boss, though. Boss, my name is and, Real Sinclair. Oh, he has, uh, he has an Uh They call me the boss of the Infernal Hogs. So it's nice to meet you all. Um, is there like fire oh, that shoots boy. out whenever he says it and like he holds his hands up? No, he, he does a flex, like a big flex and his muscles bulge. You know, oh, fuck. <laughs> I and, like, a, speaker, a speaker activates and like plays a little weedly guitar. And as he, as he says Infernal Hogs, you just hear like in an echo, hoo, 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 as a the whole... <laughs> All the entire camera does that noise. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, it like travels like a wave through it the camera. It does travel like, like a wave. Oh my goodness, I love them. What do I do with this? <laughs> and, uh, and, um, God. Sorry, I need a moment. <laughs> They're very wholesome for a street gang, I'm just saying. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. He actually pulls up some chairs and uh, makes it sit down, but like there's a there's a chair, and then there's a stool, and there's a chair with a broken back, and then he, bring, he brings out a bean bag, uh, a, sorry, a bean chair thingy. You know what I'm talking about? A bean bag, yes. Yeah, and uh, this man says, "Oh, would you guys like some water?" Yeah. Uh, yes, that'd be that would be Wait, great. Wait, no, I'm robot. I'm after six hours of driving. Uh, oh yes, that's right. Sorry. Oh, I know Richie can drive like a madman. Nice car <laughs> though. And uh, he takes out the glasses, some porcelain glasses, and puts it in front of you. All right, so um, uh, tell me why, why I shouldn't kill you all right now. <laughs> well, I spoke with uh, Mr. Richie, and uh, we, we've actually had a run-in with the same gang you're currently uh, bunker-busting. 
Oh, yeah, we heard about that. Were you guys responsible for taking out uh, good old uh, um, uh, good old Bernie over there? And uh, Bernie, you don't know, you never actually knew his name, but you have an idea. It was one of the people that you guys That's uh, That's the motherfucker. Oh, I was intimately, intimately acquainted with Bernie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the motherfucker. No, Mailing saw Bernie's dick. Let's not, let's not mince words. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, uh... I saw the news report. I saw his uh, was uh, his brains were blown off half uh, back out of his skull. Uh, who's responsible for that? Oh, that would be uh, her. And he gestures over the silk. Oh, um, uh, excuse me one second. He goes back into his vault and takes out uh, a piece of paper and a pen. He's, uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, could I have your uh, your uh, autograph? Uh, uh, uh. I lean over to Miles and ask, "What's an autograph?" He just wants you to sign your name, just like you did when you were in the. Uh... That of one other organization I'm sure you signed up for. Oh, okay. I, I write my name in, you know, my own language. Oh, that's really neat. <laughs> and he uh, kind of goes back and puts it in his little vault. <laughs> Listen, anyways, no, that's out of the way. Before, how far were you when you took that shot? We can pull up the map and check. What? Like, yeah. I, well, how, how far away was I? Yeah, put, yeah, pull up the Mecca. It's like, we can just like 800, 800, 800, 800 feet. Pretty, it was a nice, nice shot. Pretty About nice shot. 800 feet or so? Was it? Well, something like that. It was pretty far. But it was like, measured it, in meters, I think. It was so. measured in meters, but like... Yeah, it was she, like it was like a certain number of meters in game to a certain other number. No, but the thing is, like, you shot them... Uh, the Silica shot the shot when they were driving in. Like, they were really... Oh, that's right. Yeah, and well, through a moving vehicle, right. The vehicle, yeah. And, that's an important yeah, detail that she would mention. 800 feet um, in the moving vehicle. Will, um, wow. I, hmm. And then, like, he kind of, like, wriggles in the seat a little bit, and he's trying to hold back a smile right now. <clears throat> anyways, uh, uh, back to business. So, um, anyways. Would you like to see the, the, the weapon I used? Oh, um. I actually hey, uh, hey, take yeah. it out and kind of show it to him. Hey, hey, Richie, um, uh, can, can 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 you get the uh, the thing? Yeah, you know the thing. And uh, Richie from outside, oh, the thing! It's a oh, yeah. Um, hey. What's up? Hey, Alex, while you while you while they're doing all this, I'm gonna turn to Miles and just say, hey, we should just completely come clean with these guys. Uh, they seem pretty straight up, and I mean, they probably would appreciate us letting them know that the cops are interested anyway. Fair enough. I, if the cops actually do show up and try to uh, bust up our little raid, I don't want them to uh, think we Be surprised? It. Yes. <sighs> yeah, yeah, fuck that, dude. Alright, so, uh, with that, um, Richie goes and gets something, and, uh, oh, uh, I know um, we were supposed to have business, but it's okay to have a little bit of wee fun before the business, if that's okay. Is this like a Canadian gang, Alex? This is a Canadian gang. This is yeah, no, we. Gang. I've been picking up what we like. I already. <laughs> that's why I said the denim jacket earlier. So, um, if you'd like to come outside, that'd be nice. And uh, you all walk outside and uh, placed about um, about eight hundred feet away is a bullseye. So, um, oh shit. See, uh, most of us here, uh, Infernal Hogs, we're, uh, we're really bad at uh, shooting things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the who the, the, in the background, and uh, the crowd starts to form. So, um, we'd like to see most of the time when uh, we, uh, we we meet snipers, uh, we just kill them because you know they're, they're bad news. We don't we don't like snipers. So it's very rare to meet a a, a friendly sniper like your own. Again, just just to juxtapose, this is big burly man having this voice. Yeah. Uh, What's his hair look like? Uh, his hair Is looks like bald? it's like a it's a mullet. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, Is it like what color is it? It's 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 a dirty blonde mullet. <laughs> He's my son. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so um, if you'd like, you can show us how you made that shot, and uh, consider this your um, uh, well, what you call called your um, uh, well, yes. Initiation, yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, you, you don't, you're not with the Infernal Hogs, because, no offense, y'all look like turds, but it's okay. Failing <laughs> just kind of looks I, I like tried, offended in the background. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fair. We don't have nearly enough style to run with these guys, but I don't, I don't say anything. I just shrug. And, uh, so anyways, uh, I think that shot over there. Okay. 
And so what do you do? Um, I guess, can I do an execution on it? Yeah, it's technically an execution because yeah. it's like, it's, it's, it's a target. It's so then like, I'm going to try to shoot it. So you go, um, yeah, describe what you do. Um, I decide, well, I guess it would only be fair that I was lying, you know, to lie down since that's how I was doing it before. And I you notice I show what I was doing and, you know, show how I was hiding myself a little bit. And, uh, you know, as you do that, there's like seven other men copy all the moves that you do. But they don't have a rifle, so they pretend they have a rifle. Uh... So I, I just start, you know, I'm laying down on the ground. Guys, we have to join this gang. <laughs> <laughs> we have to, we have no choice. So anyways, I take the shot. Right, uh, so... Let's see, how do I do yeah. this again? So remember, it is shoots at a 3d6. Do I just hit the thing under my next to my weapon? Uh, you don't hit the thing next to your weapon. You see you where you the radio button. You see radio button to 3D. No, no, this, this, yeah. So you see where shoot is underneath your character sheet? Yes. Okay. And it'll be <laughs> dexterity. Yeah. So 3D6. Make sure it's not underneath 2D6. It's under 3D6. Have you? So have, oh oh yes. Okay. Boys. Sorry. You see that? There you go. There you go. You got it. And now you do it based off dexterity. Uh, any assisted? Uh, no. It's because you're it's this targeting shot I'll allow you to do. <laughs> hey. Every fucking time. Every fucking time, right? It's, she's four for four right now, just so you guys know. Um, she shoots the bullet, whizzes down, and uh, the, the the bullseye you shoot it dead dead center, right in the in the middle of the bullseye. And there's just hold on, just just for uh. Just, just silence as like the dust and the wind kind of um, goes past, and every single one That's of them. Really loud shot. Yeah, it's a pretty loud shot, and all of them just look at you, and just hoo, 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 hoo. and like all of them, they start cheering, <laughs> clapping, and then uh, the, one of the men, Richie, says, "Um, hey, yeah, uh, you mind if, uh, mind if I fire that and try you try, do what you did?" And uh, you know what? I actually decided to show him. I, I give him a chance, one shot. I'll let him have one shot, but I'll show hey, him make how sure I you're do marking, it. Yeah, make sure you're marking the same one too. I am. <laughs> yeah. So he says, and, and, and it looks, and uh, and the boss says, wait, 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 no, 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 no. Let me go first. And Richie says, yeah, you got it, the boss. And then <laughs> the boss walks over, does the prone stuff, and does exactly what you say. And uh, what, what you, you showing him how to do it? Yeah, I show so, him how to breathe, uh, how to do it, control the breathing. Yada, you control yada, the breathing. Yada. Okay, so he's gonna do. Um, he doesn't have the skill, so he's just gonna do a straight one d twenty. Um, uh, one d twenty. He's the boss. So that's plus three, plus two from your assistant. So he's gonna roll a one d twenty plus five. And if he rolls higher than any fifteen, he hits it. So let's see if if uh, Willie the boss hits it. Oh, that's too Aww. bad. Uh, and he does a fire. It do, it does hit it though, but not in the bullseye. It's a whoo. I hit it! It's the first gunshot I've ever hit in my life! And, um... You know, uh, and it's kind of juxtaposed, but, like, you notice in his, in his tent, there's, like, a giant fucking greatsword that he fights with the greatsword in this time and age. Um, who, well, they have, like, personal shields. And yeah, they do have fight. personal shields, yeah. Uh, he fights with the greatsword and the riot shield. That it, it seems to be That's higher true. tech level. Everybody's, everybody's gotta have their gimmick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And says, oh, wow. That's the first time anyone in our gang has hit at something. Interesting. Ooh. Well, oh my god! Do they still carry guns, but they just use them to intimidate people? They carry guns, but they can't fucking. They're the stormtroopers with them. Oh like you notice, god. there's like there's like a machine gun, like and there's a nest of a machine gun, but they have the wrong caliber for bullets for the machine oh, gun. That's dangerous. How have you shifted the tone of this game so much? Listen, I love these guys, and uh, you're making they're all us love die. them. <laughs> they're all gonna die. So um. So, anyways, uh, I mean, if I was a GM, I'd kill him just because the players like him. You gotta kill him. So, um, anyways, uh, nice, nice, to, nice to meet you all. But um, now we can settle down and do business. And with that, we're gonna end the session. And next week, we're gonna continue from this oh with the, meeting, the boss. Holy shit! Oh, that, that was good. That was something. I was that I uh, I didn't expect them to turn out the way that they did, but they turned out the way that they did. I got inspiration from Mad Max because they're literally a fucking gang from Mad Max, guys. 
kind of the aesthetic I was going for. Good. I haven't seen or read anything about Mad Max, so Me that makes either. sense. Over the top, post-apocalyptic gangs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know that. But I guess it's just uh, very fun to play with all these different themes because we're in fucking space. Uh, yeah, no. Hey, you guys do if me a Mad Max was in this. Canada. Sorry. Yeah, click on this. But honestly, I feel uh, I don't mind the tone shift too much. Was it too much, guys? Or did you guys enjoy that? It was, <laughs> it's, it's different, but I, I like all. I'll, there should be a lot of variety in a set, setting like this. A little bit of a levity. And especially if your if your core is boy, I want to do Cowboy Bebop. Silly is good. Yeah, he's right. So There's like an it, episode where they do nothing but trip on mushrooms. Like it's okay. <laughs> yes. Like your baseline is already pretty silly sometimes. But uh, you just have to like balance it out, and you know it's all about execution. Well, okay. it also had the, the my favorite one was the bounty hunter that rode the horse. I mean, you, yeah. you could just make a super depressing game like mine. Yeah. There, there, there's going to be those moments, but uh, levity, you know, like the first first half is yeah. pretty fucking intense with all that stuff happening. It's like, actually, hold on, let me find it. I posted something to someone. Hey, did you guys have fun? It's, it's literally I had fun. this. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's literally this. <laughs> it's literally that. But yeah, that is the second session. <laughs> uh, starts with our members. <laughs> a lot, lot of see the thing is I've never done a just a complete sandbox game. I've I've watched a lot of it. I've gotten inspiration from it. But I've never done it before. So I hope that I I made a town that or made a city that felt like there was jobs for like a crew like. Um, so you're not falling into the sandbox trap of like just sitting there and letting the players like just yeah. just no, like flounder. Yeah. But sometimes yeah. it's okay. You give them a lot of people who you give them a, a good starting position, and the people who want to talk to them, and then once they have details, like it, it, you don't let them go completely free on their own until they already have like a lot of options and a lot of shit that they want to do, yeah. and then a lot of knowledge about the area to okay. know what there might be there to do. And that's that's kind of what you're doing. We're getting bombarded with people who are like, "Hey, you did a thing." Yep. Okay, come do this thing for me. Hey, come do this thing for me. Hey, come do. Which means we can always come back to this planet later as a place if, in the future, the players are like, "Well, we need work and we don't know what to do." That's true. And I wanted to make the world, the the, the universe believable, and like, the the themes yeah. are there. And then at a certain. It should just be like this. Be like this on every planet. With that, you just yep. have, have enough NPCs there for us to have something to come back to. Yep. Uh, I, mean, though... I still have my like goal of planting a tree on every planet. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's what I do. But um. Oh, yeah, dude. But hey, that was a lot of fun to DM, and the Infernal Hogs will forever be a group that I made up on the spot, but turned out to be fucking great. Yeah, they're good. God, God bless them. I love them. The Infernal Hogs! The Infernal Hogs! They're gonna be in every campaign from now on, guys, exactly the same way. Good. I love them.